Hello. Oh. Slowly getting everything started and sending out the notifications. I hope everyone's having a lovely day. Bit early, so we're waiting for everyone to join. But we got this. Hello, welcome. I'm so glad you all can make it. We're still early and we're waiting for our first guest to join us. But we're also waiting for everyone to join. From all the different groups, Twitter, Facebook. Hello! Welcome! I'm so glad you all could make it. Hello! We're still waiting on one of our uh, admin team members to join us. Hope you're all excited because I'm excited to have them join us because they are fantastic in how they draw in their anatomy. So they're going to be an amazing uh, teacher for us all. Even me. Thank you. I'm uh, going to be honest. Here, I'll show you guys. I uh, I have a full version of this, but uh, I uh, decided to just shrink it down to the smaller version because I'm having multiple people join the call. So, it's just the head. I cheated for mine. I made new ones for everyone else that's joining. But this is exciting. But I hope you're all excited about this. I'm excited about this. I love drawing duchies. So it's gonna be fun to like show some tips and tricks that I've learned throughout all these years. And I hope you all enjoy them as well. And I hope it really just help helps everybody. <laughs> Whisper told me that you all wanted some more tips and more streams for all of this, so. I am willing to oblige. And this week was perfect for it. I'm thinking about possibly bi-weekly streams for art. Um, like tips and tricks and just fun things we could do for the community. Like, I've even thought of possibly doing a, hey, let's all by the community create your own Dutch. <gasps> Hello. Hello. Welcome, Shizuka. Hi. I'm gonna turn your volume up, but yeah. So everyone, this is our Wrangler Shizuka. I'm sure you all know their art. They're a fantastic artist and their anatomy for semi-realistic and realistic. Even their occasional toonie is just fantastic. So I'm really like looking it. forward yeah. to them joining us. Uh, are you excited? Yeah. Yeah, we all got this. This is going to be super fun. So, it is currently 1 p.m., like I said. So we are going to start now. And we are just going to start with just simple shapes. We're going to go and delete this layer. And we are doing digital. Um, I know some of you all said that uh, you all are mainly traditional. So maybe eventually I'll get like a camera and webcam set up. I'll have to ask my roommate. He's tech savvy. I'm not. See if maybe we can set something up for traditional. 
Or maybe I'll just make my own little side video and have a stream. We shall see. Um. All right. So we're gonna start simple, just basically how I at least start out. Um, I'm gonna shrink in because I have I work with very large canvases. Anyone who's gotten my art knows this. <laughs> um, so I always start at least with like a circle, and this is just from how I've always drawn for anything, and then I do a line to kind of show off where I want to have my look towards. So if I want, oh, I actually got white. So if I want it to go straight forward, I'll just put a line down there. Or if I want to go have it looking this way, I'll put it like that. Just kind of like put how I like the eye direction to go. Not everyone does that, that's just me. Uh, Shizuka, how do you like starting whenever you draw your duchies? Uh, it kind of depends. Sometimes I will draw with a little cross in a circle. I'll start out with that just to get an idea where I'm going to start, but I almost never rely on them for the finished product. True. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> I am currently Other times using... I just draw a tail and then draw the duchy. <laughs> I understand that. I'm the same way. Uh, I currently am using uh, Clip Studio Paint Pro. Um, you don't have to get the Pro. I have the Pro because I want to attempt at animation eventually. Um, but Clip Art, uh, Clip Studio Paint is just an amazing program in general. Uh, what program do you use, Suzuka? I'm on Paint Tool Sai, and I've been meaning to learn Clip Studio Paint for a while, but I just never get around to it. I get that. Well, whenever you want to, I'm more than happy to teach you some <laughs> fun with this that I love. Um, yeah. Somewhat off topic, but I can do stars and like little fun little things. I've heard so much good things with. about it. I hope that it will replace Photoshop for me very soon. Ooh, yeah. I I only use Photoshop to resize my canvases. <laughs> gonna be honest. <laughs> I I need to learn how to use Photoshop because I've never really used it properly. So. Um, whenever I have my little crosshatch circles and started, I will always go and get a new layer, and then the layer that has the little circles, I will lower the opacity to sketch over them. And, um, I will always start with my eyes. And I tend to make them kind of like these somewhat rounded triangles. And depending on which side of the uh, face they are, they'll be either shrunken down or kind of stretched out. Same thing with this one. Just triangles. Now with the face forward, I'm actually not cheating and using my symmetry tool. That is an amazing tool if you guys have it, but I'm not gonna cheat today. Maybe later I'll cheat, but currently I'm not. <laughs> Plus there's just nothing wrong with using all the art tools at your disposal. Exactly. If you have them, use them. They're amazing. So basically I always start out at least with the eyes. Hello, welcome. And then I will normally just start out with the muzzle. I mean, after that. So just point out where I want my nose to go. Um, I always start out with like a bit of a line. It's kind of like showing how I put my lines. So something like that, and then more of a blocky shape. Now anymore, I will just draw this outside line, and then put in my smile underneath. But before, whenever I first started, I did these kind of like rectangles to really block out where I wanted all of my shapes and then I would slowly round it out as I go but anymore I just go and just heavily sketch out what I want kind of like that now for front forward 
it can be a little bit tricky for me. It still is. I still have struggles with it. Um, it's mainly just trying to make the muzzle look still, like, narrow, but not, like, too skinny and not too fat. Because I want to try and still keep the horse element of, like, what they're based off of. And then really check to see if I like it. I'll normally add, like, this little smile to see if, like, is this right, is this wrong. So like that. And then little details just to make sure I know. At least with the front forward, where I want everything. Same thing with here on the sides. Add your little nostrils. And then your details. Oh, I forgot this guy's under jaw. So like that. Now using the curvature of the circle that I made, that's how I normally will make my cheeks out for the heads. I will normally follow my cheek route on for like the side views. The front view is different. Front view is really just kind of shaping it to where you like it. So I always start out with the chin because the chin is pretty easy and then go out it with by the eye line because it's normally narrow, narrower in the eye line. At least how I draw them. And then slowly shape out where you want your cheeks at. So like that. Then eyes, I like to add details like the brow line. like a basic basic head head shape thank you um, from there on fun details like those long ears and then the rest of the head and then the ear behind it Again, with the head shape, I tend to follow the curvature of the circle. Sometimes I'll edit it, but most of the time, as you see with most of these heads, I am following the curvature. I'm actually gonna move this head right here, because he is just in the way. So again, tools are really nice. I prefer my lasso tool, but everyone has their own preference. My sister texted me. She just had a baby. <laughs> oh, good sir. Yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna go and uh, take care of the house and cook and clean for her. Oh, and that's nice. Yeah. Alright, so. This duchy. Again, how I do my ears, I uh, cause I had I didn't really explain that. I should have explained it. Um, I'll do one right down here. So I tend to do like 
a curved line and another just like kind of triangle kind of shape out the outer ear and then from that I will bring out the inner ear and like curve it like that and then slowly bring it back and then add ear fluff because who doesn't want ear fluff I also tend to do these little black edges at the tips of the ears that's just a preference of mine um, I just like doing that with all of my duchies and then always ear fluff I tend to just do it fluffy and then do a circle like that but everyone has their own preferences So that's how I tend to do my ears, so basically all of them same thing. That curved triangle, bring it out, ear fluff. And then this one was different. I decided to do the triangle, but instead of starting here with the uh, uh, with the ear in, inside the ear, because I wanted them to look like they're folding back, I started more towards the front like the top of the triangle and then folded it back doing the same similar style of lines but uh making them look like they're folded back instead and then still ear fluff but in this time it's on the outer edge cheek fluffs and then from then on you can add your eyes and then some fun things I like to do in post is uh, change their expressions so your brows are always gonna be really good with uh, expressions I find so oh wrong there I love the way you draw their brows and it makes it really expressive oh yeah thank you This guy, we're gonna have him. Look a bit confused. This guy, we're gonna have fun. We'll make him angry. <laughs> And I can show you guys with this guy being angry how I draw a snarl. So how we do a snarl with duchies. Um, one thing to remember, they always have like a tooth cap between their front incisor and then the back molars like horses do. Um, so I tend to like make it look a little bit raised right here and then do the little nerve points and make this look a bit scrunched. And then I will take the muzzle, raise it up, do a bit of a muzzle curve, little mouth curve to it. Try and show off those pearly whites. So always remember your bottom canine goes first in front of your front canines, and then little teethers. And then fill that with black. There we go, that guy's being angry. And then this one. I'll just make him shy. Mm -hmm. 
small, it will shorten that smile. And then we give them a bit of a blip. Then I will always go on the other layer and then erase what I don't need. So go under for some of these details. There we go. So that's how I basically do duchy heads. And don't worry if people have missed the, uh, uh, missed how these were drawn in between. Don't worry, I will always go through these again and these will all be archived as well. Thank you very much. We will shrink these guys and move them to the side. All right, so I'm gonna start with a full body. So again, how I start my full bodies. Um, start with that circle. I always start with my heads. New layer. And then basically make a triangle with curved sides for your sides with your uh, for your eyes. And then start shaping out your muzzle. Remember rectangles, but if you're brave enough, you're welcome to just start sketching it out like I am. Bring out your smile. And then for your jaw. Your cheek, follow your circles. Second eye. brows, your head, your ear, going a bit too fast with this so I'm making mistakes. <laughs> This one's having its tongue out as well, because I want it to. Okay, so we got our basic head. So how I do my bodies? So again, I just start out with the neck. Um, Dutchies have a uh, neck pouch. They tend to store stuff in there, so I always tend to like give them a little bit like of a. Kind of like an Adam's apple, it's the best I can kind of explain it, but it's like at the throat. <laughs> it's a stylistic choice I tend to use, not everyone has to do this. That's just what I use for a stylistic choice. And then I bring out their neck more. And I tend to taper it off like that. And then add more 
little small details, basically where I want the body to face. So this is where I go back to my circle la layer, because I will heavily block out my uh, proportions. So I tend to do like a square with a pointy bit down with the chest. Always trying to like make sure it fits well with the neck. And then circles for your arms. But again, you want it to make sure that they taper really down well with your neck. So, and then with that, I will do a little bit of a curve line right here. Attach it to your already like chest piece, your little square side. Another curved line there, and then back, making like a funky little square. But this is basically the pit of your arm. And then slowly shape out your arm. Doing a bit of a thicker oval over towards your body and you'll thin it a little bit out as you reach out. And then as you go for your arm, again, thicker, a little bit thicker on one side and then somewhat thin it out. Pause. I tend to start out with like little curved lines for your pads. slowly shaping and adding details. Now it's never a problem in case you don't like something to lasso it and resize it or even adjust it. So like this paw, I'm gonna actually shrink it a little bit and adjust it just a tad. So one thing I like about digital, nothing's permanent. You may like the shape, but you can always just pick it up and move it. Traditional is not as forgiving. <laughs> but it's yeah, still- Yeah, I really like that of lasso tool and digital. Oh yeah, definitely. And at the very end, Plus, uh, traditional, while it's very pretty, it's nice to have in person. That's just one thing that goes up that I really love about it. I'm also gonna make this head a bit bigger. Basically how I'm doing my shapes. This is like adjusting your body and everything and your shapes is something you'll kind of get a gaze for as you continue, um, as you continue learning how to draw um, and how proportions work. Um, I know how my bodies tend to look, so I've somewhat uh, become just auto analysis of my stuff. So I already know how my heads are. I should honestly, probably. You know what, I'm gonna keep it small and I'll show you why I'm gonna adjust it later. But, so I can explain it while showing. So, going to your first corner right here. We are gonna do another curve right here for your tummy, and then another curve for your back, because duchies walk a little bit hunched. Not always, but a lot of fursuiters that I tend to see tend to walk, th walk them a little bit hunched and a little bit animalistic. And then I tend to do a line inside, a line straight, another line inside to kind of mark out where I'm going to put my hips. Now I sometimes for like the back will make it a little bit thicker because I like thick thighs in my duchies. I don't know why. That's a style choice I like. Not everyone has to do that. Like so Shizuka's duchies are incredibly beautifully sleek and thin and very majestic. Looks really good on the fursuit or anthrope style too. Yeah. The bigger, like it's like the drop crotch kind of style suits. Yeah. That look. 
Yeah, they really are. The lasso tool and the color drop fill tool are so good. Okay. Add more little details like that. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys how I do my hips. My hips are fun. Um, again, taking this circle already made, this little line, you're going to bring it down for forward. And then we're going to cut it off right there. And then bring it over here. Kind of doing like a little snake wiggle type thing with it. Where it curves back and forth. And again, we're going to go right here with that save curve line. And then we're going to keep that curve from over the crotch. And then again, cut it off right there. And I'm already seeing my canvas is too small. But I can edit and change my canvas size. Uh, height. Uh, a little bit more. There we go. This is a big canvas. <laughs> That's fine. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> I can adjust things later. Okay. So from here, you're gonna wanna mark out your knees. Your knees are important. So I'm going to mark mine here, and then I'm going to mark another one right here. For me, the knees are important because they're a good way to uh, angle out where you're going to put your feet and like your calf and everything. So from there, I pull this, and then we're going to do a slight curve uh, outward. And then taking from this outside, we're also going to curve in, but the opposite way is our outside curve, making that a bit thinner. Again, we're going for the animalistic look in this. Same thing for right here. We're going to take our inner line, but we're going to keep this a little bit more straight. And then this one we're going to curve in. Okay, and then with this, we're going to bring in our actual foot. And then I do an oval right here where I'm going to eventually place my toe beans. The same thing with here. Now with the inner foot, I tend to like do a cut right here because I tend to have them turned a little bit towards you. And again, just like that. So looking at the body right now, um, you can obviously see there's some anatomy adjustments I need to make. And you can already see for I was talking about on the head. The head is too small for the body. So this is where I go and I always go and adjust it. That makes it so much better. I'm gonna adjust the back a little bit. So this just looks a little bit wonky for, with, for me. I'm going to thin out this thigh just a little bit. And then this one right here. So a good basic shape on your body. So again, taking your little shoulder right here that you made. I'm going to make another arm. We're going to go for that. Kind of like holding your little hands out with your little paws. Look. Again, ovals with one side being just a little bit bigger. And then we're gonna make this paw a little bit different because we wanna show the back side of our paw on this one. So how I do these is I do just a little triangle on the outside and then curved lines. And 
slowly bring them together how I like. Like that. Gonna adjust that paw. Got it. All right, now for our tails. Tail, I tend to start like right here, somewhat following this little hip uh, joint right here. And then we're just gonna curve. Like that. Now wings, we're gonna do toony wings. We'll go into more detailed wings um, next when we talk about more just details. Um, because we're gonna do a feral after this one. But wings, I tend to start right here at the shoulder, where you made your little shoulder line. And then I will do that, and curve up. And then bring it out. Now I will not pull out all of the details on this. How I normally start them is just round them out to get somewhat the similar shape I want. Then I will go in and somewhat just do a rough feathering. Just place out where I want everything. I can do details in your line art. This is the sketch. Your curved lines are going to be your friends and amazing for your wing details. I tend to do three la layers of wings, not wings, feathers. But I'm also very toony, so I can get away with it. Shizuka, do I dare need to ask how many layers of feathers do you do? Layers of feathers? I think yeah. there's about, well, there's the small layer of feathers that I usually draw that makes up the wing arm, and that tends to blend really hard into each other to the point where you won't see the details well, so it's best to just kind of like, that's where you just kind of don't draw it. Mm -hmm. But for the big feather, you really notice there's usually at least uh, two layers. Got it. I know you're very amazing with the small details, so every time I look at an art piece from you, I'm like, uh, <laughs> the time and effort, I'm so impressed. <laughs> I think I've just drawn so many duchies at this point that it's at this point a habit to just draw the whole wing process. <laughs> you can do it without thinking much. I get that, I get that. <laughs> basically a layout for where I'm going to want my feathers and where my wing to be. Will I edit this? Yes. Because I already see some things on it that I really don't like. Like I have these feathers going this way. Uh, this. You know what? Let's change it to red so I can really show you guys. I have these feathers going this way, which does not make sense for these wing for these feathers right here. So I'm really going to have to change them and shape them to go that way. But still make it flow. And then same thing with here. Another wing, but we'll have it slightly folded. So I do a slightly folded wings. As I will do make sure I separate each little layer, each little section. With the elbow and all that. Yeah, I don't like that. Go back. Okay. Like that. And then I will take it from the shoulder go down and this one just go down and then just slowly add where I'm gonna lay everything like that so this is basic body shape oh and also toes I should show why I do toes again just circles a little just curved really just flesh them out like that. So after this I will go and do finer details. I'll sometimes lower this opacity even more. And then go in with our heavy sketch layer. And then just fill it all out. Get all those imperfections I don't like. And then... 
heavily fix it. You're shaping wet layers just to shape out where you want everything. Your sketch layers to really flesh out and sketch out where you want it all. And then your line art layer is going to be the finishing touches. So like even in this detail layer is when I'm going to start adding my claws. Chest. Really fluff it out. I like my fluffy chests. Same thing with necks. I like to make them really fluffy. You don't have to, but that's just me. I should have discussed this. How I do mine is do like a curved line there, one down, and then I'll curve it back up. And then and how I put my paw pads is I will take this corner and then draw it out. And then right below is where your paw pads are. following the sketches, your body sketch, where you want to keep everything. Again, another showing how I do my claws. I'm gonna add my paw pads. This one's a bit cut off, but I will still put somewhat where I would put these. You can also add fun details, so like my tails. We can add like little side feathers. If we want. Or just any tail feathers. Fun little details like that. We'll also, at this stage, fix our wings.
seeing that fix really just edits and fixes that wing a lot better. I'm much happier with that. I'm actually going to shrink in this one. And then you can go down here, delete what details you don't want, so you go through your eraser and erase what you want. opacity, merge your layers, and then you have a solid sketch layer ready for line art. Nice! So we'll go ahead and move this guy up to the top. Okay. Delete that. All right. Gotta get my pen. Next is Feral. So Feral, I tend to do them like walking sideways. That's just a habit of mine because it's easier for me. Um. I'm not the biggest feral artist. I am extremely toony. Um, Shizuka's amazing at feral. Um, actually, Shizuka, are you able to share your stream or your screen or anything like that? I can. Would you? Would it work if it were to be shared in Discord? Yeah, you could share it in Discord, and I can add a stream overlay if you want to show them sure. how you do your ferals. I've actually been working on this one sketch that might be useful. I think for this. Awesome. Kind of like going all around the duchy and just going over the certain parts of it. <laughs> awesome. Okay, gotta watch your stream. And then gotta make a new overlay. Display capture. Okay. Uh, sorry, there's gonna be... There we go. There you all are. Hope you can see properly. Would you like me to like go over what I've kind of drawn so far uh -huh. or something? Go ahead and discuss what you're doing. Sure. Well, I started out with just drawing a typical like side view Dutch angel dragon standing comfortably to approximately the best way that I was able to represent the anatomy. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is only how I interpret the species. There's a little bit of like artistic liberty in some spaces, but I generally go based off the fact that it's mostly inspired by horses with uh, that like maned wolf front legs. They don't have the knee or like wrist joint that goes halfway like horses do, but they do have the horse hind legs, which ends in this, um, this specific shape that you always see in horses, where it ends in this like little ankle. Yeah. And that leads to their back hoof, but their hoof is usually the toe, but for Dutch angel dragons, they still got a regular paw, but of course you can make that a hoof if you want to. And for Dutch angel dragons, that tends to mean that they just have an extra ankle bone joint. And that gives them that, like, trademark horse look to that. 
through. Their body tends to be a little bit canine-like, but also strongly influenced by horses. They have a nice horse-shaped neck that has a slightly a slight uh, taper to it. It's got this like somewhat triangle shape that's very broad. The bottom of the neck always goes down to this spot on the chest right in the center, but kind of a little bit lower. And they got their horse-shaped head, but that's like slightly canine-like, but still with the mini horse features. Similar to a horse, their chest uh, angle juts out like this really far. It's kind of prominent, and things like that will le lend to that horse shape that you are very familiar with. And they got like a slightly sloped back, and the unique part is where they have this big like lizard-like tail. And that keeps their rear end from being too horse-like. Then they got of course their wings, and their big ears. And I started going into sketches on the side. Oh yes, felt locks. I unfortunately don't know all the smart words about anatomy, but... Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's alright. That's just me, but... Just like the shapes, I get those at least. There's... There's that point where the horses... Not horses. The Dutch Angel Dragons and horses can have either a dipped-shaped face or a more... Um, what they call a Roman nose, yeah. Roman style nose. And over here, I went over how the horse, not horse, but also horse, <laughs> also horse. the Dutch Angel Dragon's ears can swivel forward and point up like when they're alert or being curious. It's super fun. I showed a frontal view to kind of show the way I, Dutch, or way I draw Dutch Angel Dragon ears. And something that I tend to try to enunciate across their shape is that there's like there's the inner part of the ear that has a slight small curve this part is like thin flexible skin it goes out a little and forms this this angle like this but after about halfway up it forms this slight curve and you see that in horse ears too if you make it like more subtle it forms this like overall diamond shape that you often see in big ears. Ooh, really and like you got that. the little tip. And then the outer part is just one big long curve. Yeah. For extra details, sometimes the curve goes into this like shape here that you often see in animals and it has a little bit of an extra lobe there. But often that can get covered up with just fluff. Oh, As for the inner ear hair, You've got this inner ear um, lobe, and from there you got most the majority of the ear fluff. And then from the outer ear lobe, you have a second pair of ear fluff that comes the opposite way. And that's how they meet in the middle. And then sometimes they can meet in a swirl, depending on how you stylize it. Yeah. Here I drew a series of ears at different points of the swivel. Really and I kind of showed how, like, when you have them at a really big sideways angle, oftentimes the top part will um, kind of cover up the inner line, the other side. Mm -hmm. But near the bottom, it will poke out a little bit. And you got the dome part that comes out the back. And then lots of fluff near the bottom. Because if you've, like, pet a dog or cat around this area, the fur is really fluffy and it's soft so and it's soft. nice. <laughs> Where are my Siamese cats? Yeah. <laughs> Down here, like this is a little bit more artistic liberty, but many Dutch angel dragons are drawn with sort of a canine jawset, but with that signature gap between the front teeth and the back teeth or the molars. So I do similar, I pretty much do the same thing. I guess for specific like notes, the both the top and bottom incisors, which are the frontmost teeth, there's six of them. And the rightmost or the farthest out tooth, this one, tends to point outwards a little and be bigger and sharper. Then you have the two sets of bottom and top canine teeth, the really big ones. They frame the smaller teeth and they, they tend to fit really neatly. One thing you really want to keep uh, note of is that the bottom canine teeth will always overlap in front of the top canine teeth. Mm -hmm. It'll never be like this it'll always be like this yeah 
So yeah. Out and I tend to draw something yeah. I always kind of like struggle with just thinking. I know there's some duchies with saber teeth. How would we draw that? I um, would think like the top would go over, but maybe like a little bit of the bottom goes a little bit over. What happens in that case is the teeth tend to just be big. <laughs> big, got it. Yep. Got that. And it's kind of like tooth duchies. goes all the way up like that into their skull. Yep, in the way their lip goes about to this part, if you this poor duchy is having its lip basically pulled, so that doesn't oh. feel natural or comfortable for it. But it's trying to show like a duchy snarl. And I noticed that it, for me, it's often been difficult to figure out where to position the teeth mm -hmm. because you put the big teeth here, and then you're like, oh, the next tooth goes right here, right? But then there's a weird gap. What exactly. happens is that this front set of teeth goes much lower. Mm. And the big tooth goes all the way up to here before it starts getting hidden by the gum. And you got the horse nose, is, or the duchy nose, it's very squishy and soft and it can scrunkle up like that when they snarl. They basically are lifting their whole upper lip up, then crinkling it around the nose. Hmm. I love you. And then something out here is got the front teeth, they actually form this shape that seems to be wider than where the molar start. The molar seem to be very narrow in comparison to the front teeth. I did both an upper jaw and bottom jaw, but I'm not that good at drawing the molars at this perspective. I get that, I get that. It yeah. still gives a really good idea. That's really cool. And there's the tongue, which often most people have their duchies have a split fork tongue. Yeah. Split tongue. Here I had just begun a couple of sketches, but something about the Dutch Angel Dragon feral chest based off the horse is that they have a very from the front teardrop kind of shaped body. Mm -hmm. That's the, like basically the shape of their chest. Here's the V of their neck goes up. And from here you'll probably see the rib cage poking out from the sides. You know, over here I went over like the chest shape. It's got this big uh, jutting out shape that you see with the uh, shoulder. And then you'll often see this big like muscle, muscle here that kind of pokes out. So instead of like what you usually see with a canine chest or, or foreleg where it goes like this and then you kind of like slope it down with that horse shape, it, you see the muscle start up really high. And, and if you want to detail the muscles, it'll go up like that. That's something you also see in the movie uh, Spirit, the way the horses are drawn. Yeah. And like often with horses, you can see their, well, duchies too, you often see this uh, joint that will form a little noticeable bump here. And from there, the paw can go either almost straight down or you can make it uh, relax at sort of an angle. Mm -hmm. It can have their paw like that too. And it forms like, I tend to visualize this as like a pinball, a bowling pin shape. But the way their forearm is, you get a little bit of an elbow shape poking out. That's and then often what a lot of people do here is when they get to this part, they draw it like this. And that's fine, but if you want, you can show off how there's a muscle here that kind of fills out this area. And you see that a lot in real horses. Hmm. The last drawing I did was going into the paws. Dutch Angel Dragons have semi-retractable claws. So like they cheetahs. sit... Yeah! So I based this off the cheetah paw and they stand and put most of their weight on this big pad in the center. And then their toes go out and they have a little knuckle. And sometimes if they have their toes flexed, their claws will raise up off the ground. But if they want to have more traction, they can just unflex or flex. I don't actually know what the word opposite of the word flex is. <laughs> and they can put their claws on the ground to have more traction when they're running. Or stopping or sliding. I like that. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Thanks. And that's basically what I had so far. Yeah. I really like it. It looks so nice. So they also have like a little bit of a skin flap going from their forearm and a skin flap coming from their hind leg. Yeah. God, gorgeous. Alright. 
I guess I will start drawing <laughs> a feral. <laughs> Let's do this, guys. So how I do my take on ferals? Again, I'm toony. You want realistic? Shizuka's your girl. <laughs> but I somewhat do semi-realistic. So again, our circle. But we're gonna do a little bit different with this one. We're gonna use it to shape out our muzzle. Smile. Nostrils. And the ear, the eyes. Again, triangles. A little bit different shape this time. You want to have like a curved little lens facing outwards. Again, a brow. Bringing it back to that circle, and then their ears. on our shapes. First, I'm going to resize this because it's already getting too big. <laughs> My canvas is small. Not small, but it's getting smaller. There we go. <laughs> Alright, now we go to our shapes. So again, shape out your chest. Try and make like curved squares. I'm trying to like shape out where I want to place my arm. liking where the arm is. I tend to do my arm somewhat last. I thought <laughs> maybe I got the position right and I did not. So again, little circle there just to fill up that chest a bit more. Again, more circles. Same thing right there for my hip. Now I'm actually gonna put my front 
I'm gonna put my front paws over here and there. Shape where you want. And then slowly bring her down. hind leg a little bit further down and then try and make our hind leg here You don't like the position, but you like the shape. Adjust and move. Rough sketch is always for just getting your rough ideas. Again, you want to go for your shoulder. Kind of a little bit like almost lifted open a bit. doesn't have to be perfect. Then add some back to your feathers. That's just a rough sketch right there of how I do my ferals. It looks really good. Thank you. I am not the best, but I do my best. <laughs> I do what I can. <laughs> I need more practice on ferals, to be honest. I need to do them a lot more. So we're gonna lighten this up, and then we're gonna go in and then flesh out what we want. Also, if you're all drawing along with the stream, if you're in the, uh, e even on just, like, the Facebook, uh, um, announcement where I made this, I would love to see your sketches or just your works in progress, what, what you've been working on. It would be amazing to see, and I would love to, like, at the end of both streams, 
to make a collage of what everyone has done. I think it'd be absolutely amazing. So, again, add your details, your fluffs where you want them. Also, fun secret that I like to use, I use fluff to hide my mistakes. If I cannot figure out something, but I know it's just going to be <laughs> hidden or with a bunch of fluff, I'm just going to leave the mistake and just hide it with fluff. <laughs> That's the best way. It really is. You know, there's no need to just focus on perfection. Everyone is learning as they go, and they're improving as they continue. Ooh, a hashtag would be good. Yeah. Again, just flesh out where you want your final lines to be. Also something fun about claws, whenever you make your paws, um, a common mistake I see is just they keep pointing them down. You want to curve them. You want to curve them with like the shape of your paw. So you want to curve this one a little bit inner, both your edges, your edge little paws. You want to curve your claws a little bit in towards the paw. And then same thing just right here. It'll just add that much more detail that you wouldn't really realize until once you started doing it. That just really just makes the piece really good. I think they do that in real life, correct? Yeah, well the toes are pretty flexible. Yeah. The way they rest, they can often just like, they can slant if they're really slumped into it. Depending on how the weight is distributed and how mm. hard they're squishing their paws. Exactly. The shape of the paws tends to change drastically when it's like hovering above the air, being used as the main like weight distribution. Mm -hmm. Or if you're just resting. Exactly. I'm so glad. I'm glad that they're, uh, being helpful. Sketching a day job. Good. Well, don't get in trouble. I don't want you to get in trouble, but yes. I did that. So much so that my old boss would save my drawings. 
or just for fun of it, occasionally he would put them in a- because I worked at fast food and I would always draw on like the little bottom liners for whenever people ordered like hot plates. Um, that occasionally he would just slip them in there for customers whenever I was done with them because I would never take them home. I'd just leave them laying around. I got like an older lady that really loved them and was just like, can I have an art piece every time I, I get yeah. food Aww. here through drive through And now I don't work there and I hope she doesn't ask for those still. It's very sad if she does. But yeah, she was a really sweet old lady. This is when Dubs is going to change her mind on this wing. Because... Yeah. So just out of curiosity, Shizuka, just for some fun yeah. ambient talk to, uh, talking, what, uh, how long have you been drawing and what started your uh, love for drawing? Uh, I've been drawing pretty much since all that I can remember and I've just always loved it because I like the things that I draw so I want to make them real. Good. Very good. Um, <laughs> God. Yeah, same for you. I've been drawing for as long as I can remember. <laughs> Um, and I just, what really started my love for it is, funny enough, just watching Animal Planet. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a lot of Animal Planet when I was younger. Yeah. I had a fascination of kangaroos. I, uh, so my parents, whenever they found out I was a furry, they're like, oh yeah, no, we knew you were that. We just didn't know what, <laughs> what to, uh, uh, what to call it. Because I used to, uh, <laughs> I used to take paper plates and make costumes. Nice. Man, there's some old photos of me somewhere in the world of those, uh, years ago. Just posing in front of a tree that now no longer exists. I did like the classic furry thing of like instead of playing normal house I play house where I get to be the dog and my sister gets to be the dog and somebody unfortunately has to be the human see I got uh, <laughs> I got my little pet shop <laughs> so I got a bunch of those little little shaky bobblehead toys and immediately it was just everyone was pets and then when we get bored <laughs> we take my giant robot uh, dinosaur and uh, just crash the entire village that we built, and then start again. <laughs> nice. Uh, I had so many animal toys. Same. I still have like chests and storage containers of stuffed animals that are my parents' place. That my poor boyfriend, when I move in with him, is gonna come into my house. <laughs> <laughs> he knows of them. He knows it's a thing. Oh no, same. My mom won't let me ever get rid of those My Little Pet Shop because uh. One, they might be worth something, but two, she, uh, um, she wants them for in case she ever has grandchildren, so. That hasn't happened yet for her. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad I'm not the only one that was addicted to that. I have, I know there's well over a hundred and like forty something dollars of my little pet shop in that, in that attic. From just base price to when they were originally. <laughs> Okay, so just for fun, this is the part of the stream where I'm going, because I said there would be prizes. Uh, I'm going to ask for a ref sheet, and I will randomly pick one in the chat if you want to send me a link to that. And then I will let you choose one of the headshots, one, two, or three, for me to completely finish for... Uh, 
one of these little Kentucky heads. And both streams, there's gonna be chances for everyone to get, for some, for a few people to get free art. So have those ref sheets ready. Either put them in, uh, the, I'll go ahead and open up my Facebook. Either put them in the comments if you're away from home and you don't have, uh, a, a link to something. And I will just grab one from there or from the stream chat if you have a link. Toy House, Divin Arts, any of that works for Affinity. Yeah. I know, right? Now, lucky, I had a sister growing up, like two years younger than me, so I, luck lucky enough, I did not get any of my stuff taken away and give if gifted, but. Okay, occasionally I would have a friend that was just like, I don't have this, and I'd be like, you, you want this? Like my current friend who has a baby. <laughs> baby. She has, I think, a few of my sketches as well. God, we don't even want to talk about how many siblings I have. So my dad has two kids with a lady, and then goes off to the next one. To put it nicely. Um, <laughs> I have thirteen sisters and two brothers. From that. Alright. And you know what? I'm just gonna take all these links and all of these pages. And I'm just gonna like that. Messenger. Who is texting? are enjoying the very chill music it's it is twitch safe twitch will not bamf me for using this <laughs> all right so i'm just gonna go ahead and pick three we are gonna do these randomly. Where, where is these headshots? There we go. And then we are gonna also lasso these to make them just a little bit bigger. Originally I was gonna do one at a time, but uh, copy. And we're gonna actually do a new file so that I have these ready. There's one. Sorry, I got someone. Uh, 
<gasps> Whisper, hello. Hello. I am starting the free stuff. Let me get your little thingy up and then move you. Alrighty. There you go. Oh, my little head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know how tempted I was to put a bird <laughs> on you that occasionally would just <laughs> would just screech. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. I'm gonna save your name. So thank you for letting me know. Um. Always adverb. We are going to open up a notebook so I can save these files. New. Paste. Awesome. Save that one. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting messages as I'm looking for refs. <laughs> well, not looking for refs, but doing a randomizer on refs. Alright, this is number two. I like the colors. Hi, Palette. Hi, the Meep Sheep. I am for the fox boy. <laughs> and then this one. All right. So many cute duchies. Yeah. So far, we've gone over how to do basically the basic heads. Uh. Uh, Anthros, um, and then Ferals, and then Shizuka went into details on ears, their teeth, and more just their anatomy, which is really good. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That'll be really awesome for everybody. Yeah, I've even seen in my little event chat people already uh, sending me sketches of what they've done, which has been really cool. Yeah, I saw that. That was nice. Aww. When I, when I finish this, like, big anatomy sketch page I'm doing, like, if it is, if others are interested, I could even, like, post it to the group. Yeah, I've do been, it. I've been watching it, so whenever <laughs> you're somewhat more further along, I plan on turning the, the stream back to your little, uh, uh, what's it called? To your camera. You could explain more fun stuff. Okay, you are gonna be fun. Alright. So what we are gonna do is I decided to put you on this one. And move you down. Oh, got it. How's your day been, Whisper? 
while this oh, is yeah. downtime. A little, little chaotic because three year old. I get that. Tomorrow I'm gonna be taking care of a newborn. That's even more chaotic. Yeah, I'm giving Mama Dearest a break. Yes. So I'm be good, gonna be housewife and cooking, cleaning, and then taking graveyard shift for baby. That will be so nice for her. Yeah. I'm like, I work overnight. Do you want me to? <laughs> Just getting that night rest. Yeah. She'll be so fresh. Yeah. She, uh, she called me in the middle of my work shift a couple days ago. And she's like, are you off tonight? And I'm like, no, unfortunately. What's wrong? Do you need help? And she's just like, no, I was hoping I could convince you to take care of a baby who I will not state name. Because uh, uh, I think she's in the Dutch group. But, uh, and that could just be invasion of privacy. Um, yeah. Uh, see if I could take care of her that night. And fortunately, I was at work, and so I called my mom, and she <laughs> came over. Because <laughs> her mom is busy, and, de bear and like she's got some very busy parents. One is like a scientist, the other is like the head of like the school board. And oh my god. Yeah, so yeah, my busy. mom- Yeah, busy. Very busy. Yeah, so my mom came over, and just like, I'll take care of her, I'll help. Cause her husband. Give me the baby. Yeah, her husband. She, he, there. He had the request time off, like around uh, whenever she was supposed to have her baby, but uh, unfortunately, because she came two weeks early, they're not letting him off. Oh no! So he's been doing what he can, but he's upset like he's gone without sleep for like two days trying to help her yeah and it's just so i was like hey i will literally make your favorite food and i will come over and i will take care of this and i got you yeah. plus i have experience from taking care of my baby brother both my parents yeah both my parents decided that uh um, whenever I was in high school, <laughs> that, uh, you know, we got careers and everything, but you know what? We want one child, and did, one whole bit. They did not think of the caring and everything until, like, afterwards, and that responsibility fell onto me. <laughs> oh my god. But that's okay. I love my baby brother, and it gave me some really nice experience with kids. And a good yeah. scare of being like, I don't want to be a mom yet. <laughs> yeah, you get that first-hand experience at an age where you'd understand it. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking about um, doing some, like, tutorial-y, like, educational stuff for wings because I have all these birds. Yeah, if you want, if you want to talk about it, or word. if you want to share, like, a, a, a screen or anything, if you want, I can easily swap the uh, stream overlay to you. I have the uh, uh, overlay for it. I couldn't do it today, most likely, um, but, like, another time. Yeah. Um, because... I was thinking because when um, Jack's with his grandparents, um, I do like, I, I need to do like another like, you know, overall like bird like checkup, look at their wings. And I was like, I could get really cool video to be references for people. Yeah. Oh. Explain wings and wing anatomy on a real bird. <laughs> exactly. Um, I also plan on, I said it in the beginning of the stream, but I don't know if everyone here see, heard it. Um, I'm basically free by bi weekly. So, like, next week, um, I will be busy because I'm working on fixing my house that I'm going to be living in soon. We got basically a house for free. The, the gist was we have to fix it. Oh, that's awesome. So, it's super fun. Nice. It's a super fun project for me and boyfriend to work on. Uh, yeah. But, uh, 
every other week we had like a day where we can relax and do what we want in games and i was like maybe i could just do more streams <laughs> more streams yeah just with the like wing anatomy stuff i'd have to like pre-record it so i can cut out if i get bit that's fine oh, i loved it i mean i'm kidding <laughs> uh, like as as much as it sounds like really cool to like live see it um there might be some I don't words think, <laughs> not necessarily i'm really good at poker facing it's more keeping people from seeing me bleed because i got bit ah true yeah. you got some birds that know how to fight Yes, I do. Are good times for to show the realities of animal care, but also other times you just yeah. want to show the good parts. I know. Gifford, anatomy lesson, not so much show and biting yeah. for a um, bird care. Showing biting, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. I have a friend of mine that was just like, man, your ball python, she's so sweet. And like she's a little bit shy, but she's amazing. She's never bit me or anything like that. And then goes to my leopard gecko, who I just stick my hand down there and he immediately grabs and latches on. <laughs> and they're oh just God. like, they're not supposed to do that. I'm like, meet deaf leopard. Love bites. <laughs> Love bites. Oh, I miss that guy. He was like 16 when he passed, though. So. Aww. Well, he lived a good long life. Oh, yeah. Well, he lived most of his life in a pet store because no one wanted to buy him as an adult leopard gecko. And plus, Aww. he had a history of just biting. <laughs> While me, first time I meet him looking for an adult, like, they told me they had one. And I go and I go and check him out and he immediately bites me. And it does not hurt. Leopard gecko bites don't hurt. Um, it's just surprising because this creature just bit you. Um, but they were worried that he was going to be turned off and turned away. And I was like, I love him. He's mine. They're like, what, really? And I'm like, oh yeah, no. That is personality that you will never have in another, another leopard gecko. <laughs> I need the danger angers. Yeah. And he did that for his entire lifetime that I had him. It was great. I had him for four years. Aww. So he was already pretty old. And I would still that take him to right. the little pet shop and be like, hey. <laughs> he's still here. He still bites. <laughs> but he's still here. <laughs> <laughs> well, reptiles, like birds, aren't truly domesticated either, so. True. Like, my bird like... python, she's an angel, but I know my friend who got one because she was an angel, theirs is not. <laughs> oh. I have, some of my birds are pure angels and other ones are not. Stitches is called Stitches for a reason. <laughs> and it's not because she's blue and looks like Stitch. No, it's because you snitched. Because <laughs> snitches get stitches. Exactly. Oh, better run. <laughs> Did you see some of those TikToks I sent you, Whisper? I hadn't gotten a chance to actually, like, view them, but I seen verbs and got excited. Yeah, I got, like, a gray macaw on there. Not a gray macaw, a, uh, a African gray on there that was just making Snapchat tones. Oh my gosh. And I was like, oh, I would love that. <laughs> Mainly for just the aspect of just messing with someone. <laughs> Purely that, which is not the reason why you should ever get a pet. But I just love that concept. <laughs> My one budgie, uh, Oliver, he used to make all kinds of noises, like phone vibrate noises. Um, he would make like airbrush noises because he'd hear me use my airbrush outside. And I would think my airbrush was on inside and I'd freak out and he thought it was the best thing ever. <laughs> oh. Silly I love birds. birds. I miss owning birds. I want to get another, I want to get another pigeon. Oh, he also made the sewing machine noise, so I would think I wasn't pressing on it, and I'd panic thinking I was pressing on the foot. Oh, that's cool. His favorite thing was to, like, make me freak out, and you'd see him, like, over in the corner, like, hey, 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 Living with an absolute gremlin. An oh, actual that's... gremlin, yes.
All right, time to look at this little boy, how their stitches go, because they also got stitches. Or more like they just have markings. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, s somewhat sad news, but I'm taking the responsible, uh, methods to do it. I got, my Yuki has been off feed for, uh, six weeks now. Oh, nice! Yeah, which is common in ball pythons. Don't, don't claim me as a bad pet owner. Don't worry, I've done my research. I researched heavily <laughs> before I got one. Don't worry. <laughs> Her humidity and her heating is perfect. It's just something about winter. She does this in her, before her streak was four weeks. Now it's six. Oh. And yeah. Sometimes you just have to do what they need. Exactly. And sometimes that method might not seem like the best, but actually gives you the results you need as pet owner. Oh yeah, no, I know that. I think like my biggest my. The biggest thing is what we did is there's been a frozen medium rat shortage here where I live. Uh... So we swapped her, hoping she would be okay, to um, meet to small rats because she won't, refuses to take a large. She's big enough for a large, but she refuses, which is fine. I'm not going to force her to take something she's not comfortable taking. Um, but uh, so I sw moved down and got her a small and she's not taking the smalls at all. Oh my gosh. So we finally found a shop after two hours of searching and going out of town. A medium rat. We bought all their stock. And uh, so hoping, hopefully today, after the stream, I will make sure to post updates on my Twitter if she does. If she eats. If she doesn't, Fingers she's going crossed. to the vet tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Fingers but, crossed. Yeah, hopefully she does. If not, well, um, I have a vet appointment for a reason. And then if she does eat, she's still going to the vet because it's been six weeks. She's still fat, but. <laughs> Do you think she could have like any kind of like impactions or anything? That's what I thought at first. Um, so I've been soaking her and everything, um, but no change. Like she's been, she. Uh, Easily enough, not using the bathroom because she hasn't ate, but no changes to her physique because she already is a little bit hefty, more hefty than she should be. But it's not <clears throat> obese, definitely chunky. She's got rolls. <laughs> chunky noodle. She's chunky. She's chunky. <laughs> she's an udon noodle. <laughs> she is an yeah. udon noodle. <laughs> well, it makes sense because she's also pure white with blue eyes. So exactly. She's an udon. She's an udon. Um, so she's definitely lost like a little bit of weight, but not enough for me to be horribly concerned. That's what I, everything I've been like reading and like talking to my other reptile friends, where they're just like, once she starts losing a ton of weight, be concerned. But so far, she's kept her body weight, same weight. I weigh her on the scale with me. That's the best I can do. <laughs> I need to get like an actual scale. You can get a food scale. That's, That's what I used to weigh my bird. Oh, I hear I hear a Yuki. Not Yuki. Uh what is her name? A Yuna. Yuna! I knew it was a U. <laughs> she wants to be part of the conversation always. Hi Yuna. You are a gorgeous, gorgeous Siamese and if my nine hurt, not my nine, if my zero heard you, he would want to talk to you for hours. Because you're a pretty girl. And then nine would act like he wants your attention and then be like, no, I'm going to steal the attention of a human. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite game to play with both my Siamese kitties um, is uh, nine. Uh, Zero loves Nine. Like, he wants anything and everything to do with Nine. But Nine loves me more than Zero. <laughs> oh my god. 
so I love just to mess with him and just pick up uh, zero, 09 and get him all upset because he's just like, that's mine. I love him. <laughs> you can't have him. He'll just scream at me throughout the whole hallway while Aww. 9 is just purring in my arms just like, this is what I wanted. I call Funny's 9... catch are so funny. I know. I call 9 a Siamese, but we got a DNA test done on him because I had my suspicions. He's a ragdoll. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. I had my surprise. suspicions. Yeah, surprise! Surprise! My falsely, uh, sold, uh, Siamese is a ragdoll, which I'm not upset. He's cute. Yeah, ragdolls are good. He, he's a, cause he acts, he acts like a typical ragdoll. <laughs> Hello? Oh. That was Click. Hello, Click. I don't know if you can yeah, I've got you on like speaker mode. Uh, I was grabbing my son a snack, so I was trying to go fast through Birdlandia. I don't mind. Birdlandia is allowed in stream yeah. for me. <laughs> As I said, my favorite part of Nimbus's bird whenever we would chat on VC was he would just occasionally scream, and uh, I'd be like, "Hi, Cosmo." <laughs> <laughs> I miss having a bird, but I cannot have a bird because my house cat Lynx kills birds. Oh. Yeah, no, she she would decimate. Like we made her an inside cat because that was a problem. She would just bring me home like crows, and I'm like, no, 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 we ain't doing this. That is called responsible pet ownership. Yeah. Yeah. I did mute my mic for opening Jack's bag of Cheetos because. The sounds are murderous. <laughs> Cheetos. I'm kidding. <laughs> Whisper, I want Cheetos. <laughs> Get some Cheetos. Mom, I want Cheetos. <laughs> just play in my house. Just come to my house then. Mom, we bought a giant hours box, away. Like, <laughs> we bought like a giant box of like the um the single serve, you know, like the single size ones from yeah. Sam's Club. So we have a ridiculous amount of little bags of Cheetos. Oh, that's amazing. One day I will come visit. It'd be fun. I'll draw you. Welcome art. to Birdlandia. Oh yes, Bird Birdlandia. You will try to eat dinner, and you will get covered in birds who want your dinner. If I don't remember to put them away. That's okay. I will happily share. <laughs> <laughs> I used to share with my parakeet. <laughs> I actually- we They eat a whole lot more than parakeets. Oh, I know. I had a scare- You can step away from your fight, come back, and there's nothing left. Oh, no. <laughs> like that one cabbage video I sent you. <laughs> cabbage. <laughs> yeah, one scare we had with Sammy whenever I had him. Uh, he loved tea. So much so, that he would just- go and like slowly like dunk his head in take a few sips and then dunk his head out and uh he one time almost drowned himself getting tea because he oh my. he went a little bit too far and uh oh. he just fell in but thank god we were Baby, in the no. same room but we were just like sammy no <laughs> he was fine he was I'm wet he got a bath <laughs> and then your your tea got a little extra burb flavoring yeah, more like my tea. Delicious. Cup, but yes. <laughs> Click is insane with tea, and like I, I cannot have him out if I have coffee because he oh, should not have can. coffee. I do not need that level of click energy in my life. <laughs> oh no. He just vibrates like he across is... the room, like clips into a wall, and you're like, how? You're not a game. <laughs> No, no. When I was pregnant, he ate some Oreo O's with oh, me when I was laying in the bed, and there was no way for him not to. And mind you, ringnecks are really hardy. They are one of the few birds who will not die from this. Uh, they are considered pests, and you know, kind of like pigeons in America. Oh yes. Uh, 
I love my pests. I, I didn't really think about it. And I went to go put him away for the night. And he started doing zoomies, flying circles in the room and talking at speeds that he was inaudible. <laughs> and I was like, why did I do this right before bed? <laughs> Pregnancy cravings, man. And that was back when they still had the Oreo O's that had the marshmallow Oreo, like, creamy bits. Oh, I miss yeah. that. I don't know why they took that from me, and I'm depressed about it. Well, if they ever bring it back, I stock at Walmart, so I'll make sure to let you know. Yes. I will immediately just be like, what's your address? I'll send you a whole pallet. <laughs> oh my god. It won't last any time at all. I know. <laughs> Between like me just, and my son. You just, like, see it at your front door, and you're just like, you sent me a pallet, and it just has dubs with a smiley face. <laughs> oh my gosh. Perfect top tier, 100%. <laughs> um talking about like pregnancy cravings my uh friend whenever she was pregnant <laughs> she uh her husband had to call me a few times because uh she would want shepherd's pie and i was the only one that ever made it for her <laughs> and so so no other shepherd's pie is gonna be good enough I know, and there's a few times where he's just like, how do you make shepherd's pie? Mindy's asking for it. I don't... I don't know how to make it. <laughs> and so I'd come over and, like, make it for her. For him, and just be like, there you go. It's super easy. <laughs> it is really easy. I just wanted to eat literal fire, like the spiciest things in existence. And now I see where that got me. Jack ate an entire reaper I was curating to be reaper powder. Oh my goodness. Boy. Yeah. Yeah. It was like an extreme level reaper and he hid in his room and ate it and I never even knew. Like he didn't cry or make any noise while he was eating this murder reaper. Boy's got like an iron stomach. Oh no, it destroyed his stomach the next day, that's how uh, why he told me. I asked him if he was going to eat another one, because I've got a huge reaper plant, and he said yes, because it's delicious. Uh, I'm terrified. I'm also terrified of your child. <laughs> he's he's gonna- I, so, I have a really bad stomach, I cannot- I have a very acidic stomach, should I say. I love spicy mm -hmm. I come from like the heart of Texas like spicy is what I love and crave um but it ruins me like oh, eating no. so much so that like a uh, pepperoni sets it off so like eating pizza is a oh. decision <laughs> yeah um but yeah, that's one thing I always suffer from. Like my roommate, he got uh, spicy chicken fries, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, no, uh, <laughs> that ruined. That was bad. That hurt me. Oh, it was very. Oh scary. no. Okay. I feel that though. I have like a really sensitive stomach. I think my stomach hates me. Oh no. Aww. I have a sensitive stomach too, but it's to dumb things. Like, I can't eat chicken or pork. Oh. But I can sit here and chomp on, like, spicy stuff, and I'm like, what is this? Neutral foods, not for you. Uh, Shizuka, do you want to go over what you've been working on while I continue these headshots so that we can still talk about, like, anatomy and art? Sure. Be yeah. down for that. Let me go ahead and move the display. There you go. Yeah. So I've continued doing some more drawings. I went on to detail out more of the frontal view of the chest and legs. And something that I tend to, like, accentuate is the way the legs 
Um, well, you've got that same muscle that starts out and is a little bit higher than the inner leg muscle, the fore leg. The inner leg muscle pokes out just a little bit, but you notice that there's often this line that kind of overlaps from the wrist that tends to show up. Then there's this kind of triangle section where a part of the, it flows into the body from there. And then overlapped is the tummy poking out. So that's kind of like the, for, the frontal view. And I went into some paw shapes. Ones from the front and sort of the top. And it shows how like the sort of the shape can look like from the front. But when it squishes down, you can be really creative with that and just squish the paws all over the place. <laughs> And they kind of can go out of diagonal if it's like leaning to one side or the other. And there's the paws from below. Based off the way that uh, Eno has drawn the paws anatomy, they have like this sort of rounded triangle shape. A large middle front uh, shape up front and then two like paw pads near the back. They have a little bit of a crease near the bottom. And then there are four toe beans. Beautiful. Yeah, Top tier, 100%. <laughs> they're arranged in a way where the front ones jut out a little bit more and they have this like kind of an outward shape to them. It's like that, but then with the bulb out front like that. And then these uh, secondary toe beans tend to have kind of like a triangle-ish shape with a round edge. So you got this round outer part, and this part is kind of triangle shaped. And then the claws and the fluff. This inner part here, they, normally you would, well, sometimes you could probably have it for less fluffy dutchies, but you can have the toes going like that, but it's often covered up by the fluff on the bottom. Here's another sketch that shows that dutchies have uh, webbed toes, so they can stretch out their toe beans. And you'll see the little flaps between. And also another thing is Dutch Angel Dragons generally don't have a dew claw, which is what like usually you see in animals where there's like this kind of claw. Dutchies, they you can draw one and have that on your OC character, but usually Dutchies don't have that. And I went and started going into wings. So I kind of have like the basic structure that I drew in pink here. It's got like the shoulder joint, which is kind of like on a ball shape, which is the way that other like shoulder joints in animals have. But then you got the... Yeah, that. And you got the um, upper arm joint, and then you got the lower arm joint. This part, this upper arm part tends to be a little bit shorter than this one. And then you have like the little um, bird wing bone hands that kind of like, there's more detail to this, but that's never going to show so you don't have to know what goes there. I think what's important is the fact that instead of a wing having like this noticeable elbow like that, wings will have this tendon going from the shoulder to the wrist and it creates this sloping curve. And all of this part will get covered up in feathers very evenly, so you won't be able to see that inner angle of the elbow of in wings. So that creates this curve shape, and then you have like this like layer of feathers that is tons of itty bitty little feathers that blend in together so hard that you usually don't need to detail all of those. Unless you're doing hyper realistic, hyper detailed art, they can go for it and have so much fun. If you are doing the hyper realistic art, one thing you can try to uh, do it is that you just have little feathers. The feathers kind of go in this direction when it comes to outlining. And same with the feathers here, they just kind of like go like that. But then you have the. The feathers go around here, they create this little glove around the um, arm. It goes around the elbow here. And then it fills out this way because there's this specific uh, layer of feathers that uh, kind of fill out the armpit. And you can see over here, I drew it here too, there's this layer of like 
a fan of feathers that fill out the armpit there. And now we have the flight feathers. There are fancy terminologies for these, but I don't know them. <laughs> There's the first layer, which is the inner layer, the shorter layer, which um, just kind of like fills out the whole wing. And something that a lot of people I think don't know is that the feathers, they attach to the arm, of course, like that. But there are no feathers that attach from this part of the arm. So the feathers end at this point where they are angled towards the elbow. They stop at the elbow and they stop growing out from the elbow. And so sometimes when birds are flying, you can see for an instance, there might be a gap between the feathers and the body. And if you show that gap, it kind of looks interesting. But sometimes that gap is a little bit filled out if it, the wings are held closer to the body or if it's a certain angle. Another thing that, uh, another layer of feathers to point out is, you'll see it better from the top view, but let's see if I have a, I don't have a sketch that shows it well, but anyway, the top view, let's say there's like wing, there's this like whole like cape of feathers that kind of fills out this whole area. And the idea is that that will also fill out some of the wing, whereas you have the hidden elbow, the feathers coming off and ending at the elbow. So there's that. Well, I'll just leave that there. Next up is the final layer of feathers, the ones that will, are very important. These are the biggest flight feathers. Again, and they just like, you can draw a guideline to make sure that they're nice and even because the feathers, the edges tend to line up. And I have this other guideline that shows how you can do this little feather technique. Uh, not all birds have this shape of feather for these outer feathers, but if you want to do this shape, which looks really neat, you can do a guideline here and a guideline here and have the feathers up near the end, just like have it go like this, but then do an extra little curve. And you follow, the curve starts where the second line goes. And eventually the feathers turn from this like double curved thing to a single curve and they have gradually become the more blocky shape of feather. Another thing that I think is really important when drawing feathers is to know which way they overlap. When you're looking at the underside of the wing, it's the outermost feathers that overlap the innermost feathers. And when you're looking at the upper side of the wing, it's the innermost feathers which uh, overlap the outermost feathers. So that's pretty important to know. When you don't do it right, some people who notice, it tends to bug them, but it's also called uh, backwards wing syndrome. So it looks like you uh, flips the wings or the wings are upside down. And this makes it so that when the uh, Dutch Angel Dragon is flying, the, stri the power comes from the inside and goes to the out. So all these inner feathers will push down on the outer feathers when they're overlapped. And then when the uh, dragon brings its wings back up, the feathers will kind of like turn like a slot, like slits, and let the air through when, they when the dragon brings its wings back up. So here I have a drawing of the wing as it starts to fold, where I'm going to show that how the feathers overlap. Well, they will start to smush into each other, but what happens is that they start to separate into the front or like outer and inner sections. There's the feathers that come off the hand and the feathers that come off the arm. The feathers that come off the hand will start to overlap the feathers that come off the arm and you can draw the way the feathers like overlap like this, the way I've done so in pink. And then when you have the uh, wing completely folded up, the hand feathers will kind of sort of completely overlap the um, arm feathers. The same goes when you view it from the top side. The arm feathers will almost completely overlap the wing feathers. The wing feathers actually are not visible. These are all arm feathers. The, the hand feathers were hidden behind. You can draw in another color, but the hand feathers kind of are going like this right now. Depending on the shape of the wing, sometimes they're really long. Sometimes they get covered up completely. But yeah, that's why when you see a bird like with its wings completely folded, they just look like this shape. And you're like, which part of the feathers went where? Well, this whole shape that you see on a bird, like just bird, 
is their um, arm feathers, and their uh, hand feathers are underneath. That's really good. Thanks. Then I just like little details of the feathers themselves. You got the like outer flight feathers. And they tend to have the middle spine going towards the edge. So it's thinner on one side and thicker on one side. And then for the blockier shaped feathers, it's in the middle. And oftentimes you'll see these little lines that show the uh, texture of the feathers. It tends to look pretty good. Oh yeah, another thing is these feathers I've outlined in pink. On the top side of the wing up near the base, there's these feathers that kind of stick out a little bit noticeably and they also overlap. These are the feathers that are specifically attached to the wing's thumb. And they are sometimes used in flight. I don't know exactly how, but that's just another thing that's noticeable. I haven't drawn out more sketches of this, but for the tail, when it comes to overlapping them, it's the farthest outmost feathers that will overlap the innermost feathers. That's the de direction they'll overlap. And same with if you have feathers near the base of the tail, they will overlap like this. They'll overlap from the back to the front. And yeah, you could probably sketch a little bit to show like some of the tail shapes, but the tail is kind of like this, the cross section of the tail is like a teardrop shape. You got the spine up near the top with a little bit of spine ridges to kind of give it more bulk. But you got the tail and depending on the spine, you can have it go like that. It can be pretty flexible, very snake-like, but also it has muscles so it can be used to help steer the Dutch Angel Dragon and keep its balance in flight. So it won't be too flimsy. And I guess the other point I can bring out is that the, bot the base of the tail ends in this like part here where there's like a bone that you'll often see in like birds or dra dragons, but also like uh, dinosaurs. They sit on that bone, so that part will never be able to squish inward. It will always like be very firm out like that. Because there's a bone there that they sit on when they're sitting down. It's their seat bone. Dinosaurs. <laughs> I guess I can go into like the hind legs. Their knee is right here. And their hip bones are right here. Sometimes you can see the shape of the hips like this. And that's also like the shape of the horse hips that you often see. And like the, there's bones that kind of go in this direction. Their knee bone isn't a specific single point, but it's kind of like more of a shape of a point there. So there, the knee won't always be like a big shape like that. There'll always be a little bit of a rounded bit to it. Next you have the leg going into their ankle. This part is always a little bit wider, kind of, especially in the vertical sense. And this part of the leg is always very thin and narrow. So it's kind of like got the wide part that transitions into narrow. But then you also got the shape of the ankle. There's this little uh, ankle bone that goes in here. But on the inside, inner ankle, it's kind of a little bit more rounded out, so that's why you'll often just not see as much of that detail there, but you can still put it there. The anatomy knowledge here isn't perfect, but it's just basically what I know. Another thing I would say is that when it comes to this line from here to here, you've got this big leg muscle here. And that leg muscle always fills it out to the point where I think the from the knee to the ankle Instead of being a straight line, it won't usually be concave. It'll pretty much always be rounded. So that causes the leg to always have this round shape, even if it's got a little bit of a slope, especially near the end, or an inner slope. Mm -hmm. Which leads up into the body, and it kind of like flows in very evenly. 
Like what's secretly unknown is that there isn't much here because there's no bone there, but it fills out with fats and muscles. Especially the fats and muscles that connect the rest of the body, like the ribs. Your anatomy skills are amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh yeah, with the back side of the leg, I'll draw that again. You don't really ever want to give it like this shape with like a noticeable calf muscle because they have tendons that will just go straight up. Yeah, I have made that mistake. <laughs> yeah, for a super like extra buff duchy, you could probably hint to that a little bit, like give it a little bit of a muscle, but it'll pretty much always slope up. So these lines that start from the ankle always go and like... They're pretty, like, parallel, but, like, gradually widen out. And then they fill out to these very strong muscles that help uh, control the tail. These the gluteus muscles. Or, probably not the gluteus muscles, that's not the right muscle world, but... Gluteus big muscles. hip muscles. <laughs> very trademark horse shape. I really like them. They're really cute. <laughs> oh, I, I wanted to note something interesting that you can do with an abyssal. Is birds, when they're sick or distressed, will actually flip the side, like their wings, like the directions of them. And it is a gradual process. So if you are doing an abyssal, you can actually do some of the feathers kind of going in the wrong flipped way. Yeah. To show signs of distress. Yes. Me who has a partial abyssal and also like abyssal duchies. Yes, I would love. <laughs> I love this. And uh, I can sh like what I do like my bird tutorials. I can show how it looks when it's flipped the wrong way. Too so to show how that yeah. looks because uh, it is a big sign of distress and it's one of like if you're a bird owner one of the first things to look for like on their wings if you think they're acting off or their tail is they'll start flipping their feathers to point in the wrong direction sometimes to the point where they can't even fly so is there um any reason like mental reason why the birds do this or is it just they just do this it's a stress behavior got it and as the, the sicker they are the more they'll do it and sometimes it even leads to pluck it oh the, you know like the you notice the feather flips and then some will start plucking from that point it's it's like a like almost a nervous tick got it Or like if a bird gets like, you know, like if they're super disheveled, like they fought something, oftentimes feathers will also get flipped. So if you're doing like an action kind of thing, you can include that and make it more realistic. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I thought awesome I'd point that in there. That's actually Sad really Sad for cool. the bird. Yeah. As somebody who, no. you know, birds is my specialty, so. <laughs> Yeah, getting real references or just like in-person references for birds is always the best because like photos on Google images seem to just never do them justice, especially with how well they blend into each other so you can't see what's the details. And what makes it easier for me is I have some birds, like uh, especially my ringnecks, who actually have where their flights and some of their primaries are a different color. Or for stitches where she's um, a turquoise, her little itty bitty like upper feathers that are tiny, you can see all the details of because they're different colors. Oh. So that's how I, you know, want to provide some references for people because their colors and everything else and seeing mm. movement versus looking at movement. I love that. Yeah. More help for the community. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So everyone who uh, I chose to pick one of these, here's the first one. 
the second, and the third. Um, I've got your pages that you sent me your character on, uh, so I will PM you through those, all through Toy House. So you will get a PM through Dub's Pixel Paws, and I will send you your uh, a drop box of your headshot for you through there. But here they are. Okay. Okay. I think we have an hour left. Double checking. We have two hours left. Hell yeah. Yeah, this one's a longer one. Alright. So I guess we'll get into some abyssals. Which is something I love to do. Um, I don't have it on this computer. So, fun fact, I'm using my roommate's computer. Uh, everyone think my roommate's. Because my computer is broken. I have a replacement on its way, but Dell is very slow. So, thank goodness for Toy House for saving uh, some character sheets that I have. Uh, save image. Save. Hello, Mark. <sighs> Hello! Let me get your little character up here real quick, and then I need to move you. <laughs> Alright, now we gotta resize everybody. Fun thing about streams. <laughs> yeah. And myself. There we go. I think we got all of us in a line. Welcome, everybody. Okay. Time to go through characters. So I'm gonna pull up Dubs because she's slightly abyssal. And then Flicker is my abyssal. So, something fun that I did with her. This is not my ref sheet. Uh, the credits. Uh, I designed her, but I was too busy. Too busy, unfortunately, to do her finish her ref. So, if you ever want to commission this artist, because they're amazing. Uh, Ju Juliana Wittak? I think that's her name. Um, here, I'll just post. Oh, dang, I, that. Oh, no, that doesn't work. Well, as Juliana would talk, I can just, you know what? I'm going to type their name in here because they deserve credit for this amazing ref. Oh. That's their name. I'm bad at pronouncing things. Um,. They made this ref, and I really, like, kind of emphasized with um, her that she has a open chest cavity, where um, it's very much stylized, but she likes to collect her candles and put them inside of there. So a lot of things with, uh, uh, with abyssals is you can have, like, open chest runes, you can have, uh, like, your part of your skeleton and all that coming off, and, like, really make them look scary. 
Um, you can do a lot of these darker colors. Um, Dubs has a lot of the, um, uh, what is it called? The, the black from the abyss. Um, this wing. She is now completely flightless. And, uh, this wing right here, she, out of stress, has just ripped and stripped these feathers from being in the abyss in and out so much. Now, you don't have to do these always, like, for the cannon, the broken wings is just for cannon. You can do both if you really want to. But... Those are just fun details you could add for your abyssal. Like, Dubs is still looks really cute and fluffy, but you can have these fun traits to add. Um. I went down the emaciation line with Mort. Huh? When I was doing Mort's uh, abyssal, I went down the um, emaciation line, so he's like, for skinny. Sorry, I had to turn you up a bit. This is alright, I'm not very loud. No, that's totally fine. I can easily turn you up and then the stream will be able to hear you. Uh, do you have any reference photos for that that I can share for the stream? Ooh, uh, let me have a look. Yeah. I might do. And then I can just show that up and throw it up there. Let me have a little look-see. we go. Copy image, and then I'm just gonna pop this right here. There we go. And you want to explain it, if you like? He's just skinny man. Skinny man. <laughs> ah. Skinny man. <laughs> Good I just wanted to draw him as emaciated and disfigured as I could. Yeah. Basically. And that's really good for abyssal. Abyssals are fun. Go scary with it. I love abyssals for Halloween. I love them just constantly. Go scary with your abyssals, my friends. Yeah. We'll go over some. We'll do a fun little sketch here. We'll go over some abyssal little things. Some poses and stuff I like to use for abyssals. Again, like making them angry. Furrowed brow, adding those little notches. Having a good day, Mort? I'm just putting stuff away, so I'm sorry if you can hear rustling. No, you're totally fine. It is getting late here now, so... Oh, I get that, I get that. I do almost bedtime. 
Oh, no, it's bedtime. Most is sleepy time for me. <laughs> That's okay. I should be in bed because I worked all night last night, so. <laughs> I am insane and just has second wind. Yeah, second wind do hit. Where everybody these last few days has been pulling all nighters. I don't know what's going on. Well, I work overnight, so. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> hey, extra money, my friend. Uh, luckily, my workplace closes at night, <laughs> so I don't have to. True. Not be dealing with customers overnight, I would go insane. I mean, I don't have to deal with customers overnight. I just have to deal with my boss overnight. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably worse. <laughs> uh, well, she called in last night, so I gotta deal with the chill bosses who don't care and I'm actually friends with. <laughs> They're just like, I don't know what's her problem. You do a good job. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so here's a fun little abyssal little headshot. Just showing them looking all scary and snarly. An angry man. Yoshi, ma'am. I also like just for whenever they're snarling, like to raise their hackles, like doing just their hair on end. It just gives me some nice little details that I like. Good agitated floof. Yeah. Big anger mood. Big growl, big mood, much upset. Um, I'm so gonna I actually can... do something that I also recommend every every artist always do is look up reference pictures. I have an idea for a fun abyssal idea. I have to look up some reference pictures that might show up some gore, so I'm gonna put that on my third monitor. <laughs> uh, that'd be a fun, just abyssal head jar. Broken jaw. I wanna see, like. Got your poor search history. <laughs> Oh yeah, my poor, poor search, search history is awful. <laughs> FBI is gonna look at my stuff and be like, what is wrong with you? And I'll be like, don't look at it. It's fine. <laughs> Either a serial killer or an artist. <laughs> <laughs> Pick <Or> one. <laughs> yeah, the artist is definitely <laughs> kidding. Bit, bit of both. Uh, Best of both worlds. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> nah. I am all oh. I am all bark, no bite. As soon as you confront no. me, I will cry. <laughs> Same. <laughs> the, the, I sent you a really good reference picture to talk uh, that shows what uh, Shizuka was talking about at that like a base, like flap of feathers. It's a, it's a baby bird, and it is a great reference to really show off how that looks because it's not fully feathered. Yes. Okay. Copy image. We are gonna pull that up real quick. File new. Do you want to discuss and talk about what is going on right here? It's a really good reference for what Shizuka was talking about at the base of the wing. How like there's this like that poof that she was talking about at the very right by the body, as well as how there are very few feathers at the base there. It's also a really good way to look at the directions of the uh, flight feathers because she has very little of her like more down feathers, so you can actually visually see much better. Even into the way that the other wing sits as it's uh, folded in. Very good, very good. It's a really good way to show off what Shizuka was talking about exactly. on an actual bird. Yeah. Looks really good. I knew I had that picture somewhere. I've been digging for it. <laughs> <laughs> sweet, sweet bean. Yeah, it shows off exactly what Shizuka was talking about. Exactly. <sighs> oh, streamer's gonna hydrate. She filled up her massive water bottle. 
I am gonna mute my chat because Yoshi is not gonna shut up. <laughs> mm. Yoshi, how dare you? No. That is cool, Yoshi. Yoshi. I'm hot. Everybody in chat, all of you, hydrate, get water. Water's good for you. Your kidneys would love it. <laughs> <laughs> I have tea because I'm British. I mean, you have to use water <laughs> to make it, so. I guess it's fine, but also tea's bad for the kidneys eventually. It's alright, if I'm going out, I'm going out in British style. <laughs> with tea. Oh no. <laughs> Mortimer, no! Mortimer, yes! No. <laughs> oh gosh. Who <laughs> raised you? <laughs> I don't have normal fluids in my body, it's all tea! Oh no! It's just tea. There's no, no blood you in bleed, here, just tea. You, you bleed tea. Just yeah. Like, oh. Bling tea. <laughs> oh, amazing English breakfast. What's wrong with you? <laughs> You're like, oh no, he's British. I don't know. I'm feeling a little more Earl Grey today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a bunch of uh, Japanese green tea. Hold on. <laughs> I bought and oh. supported an amazing Japanese green tea grower um, in Japan. And, uh, oh man, do I hate green tea. <laughs> oh I supported a pl a s I supported them. They got the money, and they <sighs> went and, like, got to put up a few more bushes and, like, actually do things with it, which I'm very happy for, and it's fun to watch. Uh, there is a bush with my name on it. <laughs> it's nice. not even my actual name. It straight up is just dubs. <laughs> Cause I want Perfect. It to be. <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, you have to. I have a friend of mine from high school who just came back to America, and her husband is Japanese, and they moved back from Japan because she was forced to because COVID and the Japanese government being upset. Uh, so uh, she had to move back, and he was incredibly supportive and moved with her. Um, because he didn't want her to be alone. And, uh... Uh... They, they made me, like, the sweetest New Year's Eve's gift. Like, they gave me, like, a little gift little thing. And I have now, like, Japanese yen that's forever in my wallet. Because it's so pretty. Oh, it is nice. I do love the currency from there. The coins are so pretty. Um, I have, a, load I have my own little teacup. They're so small. They're so, so small. <laughs> they are tiny. I love it. It's so, so small. Um, and, uh, and they also gave me some satchels of the same tea that I own in my house. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, oh my god. Uh, yes. More of this green tea that I know is healthy for me. And man, do I need to eat it. Not eat it, drink it. <laughs> Especially if you're tea, eating if you tea, try. you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Oh, what, what do you mean? I'm putting cookies. It's fine. That's how matcha works, right? You could, in theory, eat tea, yeah. I'm gonna eat a tea bag now. You got Yoshi out, and in return, she knocked a box onto my head. Oh, Yoshi, why? I trusted you! I've just been given a bag full of socks, but I don't have any space for the socks. That's okay, I, I live next to hampers of clothes that I will forever never fold. <laughs> they're clean. I promise they're clean. <laughs> I think they're all Christmas socks as well. Oh. While they're going in the drawer. I love socks. <laughs> just more showing. Just different positions of how to draw little duchy heads.
That expression is top tier. Thank you. This is just what I wanted. I don't know why. You look so scared. Yeah. We're See going that abyssal. Now. No Probably spotted something absolutely harmless, but is terrified anyway. I've left the oven on, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> the face of uh, whenever you think you left the oven on, just like can I leave the oven. <laughs> and you forget to defrost the chicken, and your mum pulls into the driveway. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I am currently de defrosting chicken right now for dinner. My roommate is on a kick of that he just wants, like, chicken and potatoes. I'm like, dude, eat more meats. Though I know we have a surplus of chicken right now, but eat other things and just the same meal I cook for you. You could do the cat thing and draw a cucumber. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they have too many socks. Ugh. Honestly, I didn't think I'd find myself at half eight at night sorting out a drawer of socks. It's fine. I mean, hey, you gotta sort it out eventually, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that task you've been avoiding for way too long. Oh, me and my laundry, that's definitely what what's going on for me. It's me. Is it you? No, it's not me. <laughs> Can be me if you want me to, I'll text you. I mean, I'll text you back. <laughs> hey, at least they didn't tell you to make it a pineapple. That's a long running joke. True. <laughs> D is forever plagued with pineapples. Yes, she is. <laughs> Come from. It's like an origin for the pineapple thing. What? Where did it, that come from? Please it explain. It started with Mizu. And. Like, if I remember correctly, Mizu just had this pineapple. This entire convention would pretend it was her baby, kept leaving it in front of Dee's door so she'd open up and there was this pineapple. Oh it was this entire convention where this pineapple was just present for everything. And it just started the whole pineapple joke. Yeah, the, the idea that Dutch Angel Dragons kind of either freak out over pineapples or are super obsessed with them. That's totally fine. Uh, Ember the Fox Boy. Just, um, one thing I do want to say, don't, like, I don't really want tracing. You can definitely use it as a, um, reference to look back, make your own, uh, to make your own little version of it. Um, but I, because I really don't mind that at all, but I'd love to, like, people to get their own, uh, muscle memory for your own art. Which would be great. It really helps, like, your own artistic, like, you, I know it's been said thousands and thousands of times again, like, practice makes perfect, but it really does. No, don't give Yoshi chocolate. Why not? Because I don't want her to have zoomies. It's fun. <laughs> I am the bad child. <laughs> I'm the honorary one. <laughs> I can tell. I'm 27 I'm... years old and I'm still just causing trouble. <laughs> Funny enough, in my family, I'm actually the good child. All I do is just. A likely story. Hey, hey, 
My <laughs> sister has stories. <laughs> While me, they look maybe... at me and they're like, you're boring. <laughs> All I maybe, know is just stuff. maybe your siblings are just way worse. I mean, true. True, true. That was scary to think about. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, like, let's start with uh, my sister, first time ever going to a skate park, grabs a skateboard. She's like five, by the way. She has never, ever, um, have ridden a skateboard before. Me, I'm smart, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna grab a scooter. I know what I'm doing with this. She grabs a skateboard and goes to the tallest hill and just like, Mommy, Mommy, oh. look, I'm a big kid. Mom just goes, <laughs> no. Chaotic energy right there. Oh, yeah. And then there's the time where she climbed up the tallest tree she could find and thought, oh, the hay bale will break my fall, jumped off and broke her leg. Ooh. Um... Also, she that got kind hit, of energy. She also got hit by a car. By a nurse. I should laugh at that. <laughs> selling Girl Scout cookies. Oh my god. <laughs> it is laughable. Do not worry. It has been several years. She's fine. She's alive. She's an EMT, by the way. She is an EMT right now. My question is, did she sell her Girl Scout cookies? Oh yeah, she did. She got that bike at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Straight up, like, that is the biggest story my sister has, is selling Girl Scout cookies. Uh, she was- her brakes went out on her bike. She was, uh, riding around the neighborhood. And she was like on the tallest hill. She could not stop, and a nurse hit her with her car with my sister oh my. on the bike. So, bonus, like silver lining, uh, she got treated immediately. <laughs> I mean, I guess the best person to hit you is somebody in the medical field. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Immediate care. Exactly, exactly. A hit by an ambulance on call, do they have to stop? You gotta scooch over and make some more room. Let me call my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, well, you know what, no, I'll text her, we'll see if she responds, and we will find out. Hit and run, and then you have to wait for the next one to come. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, my sister right now. Hey, when you're on call, and... You hit somebody, someone, do you have to stop? Anything else we want to add to this? <laughs> no? Okay. My best guess it would depend on like how dire it is. Yeah. We will see. Like if the patient you're transporting is like pretty okay, maybe they have to get out and wait for the next one. Mm -hmm. Just kick him out be like, yeah, you can wait. <laughs> you you can wait. You can wait. So we will we will have to see. Um we'll see if she's awake mainly because she also works night shifts, so she may be dead asleep, and this may have to be a response to Friday where I will answer this question. <laughs> oh my god. Quite intrigued now, to be honest. <laughs> uh, same? Same. <laughs> I'm also now curious to this. <laughs> she knows I'm streaming right now, so it would be funny if she was in the chat and also concerning because I'm talking about her. <laughs> and I would get flack for that. But it's fine, that's what sisters are for. <sighs> no, don't share it with stitches, okay? Why not? Because he's she's already had enough sweets today. But she wants me. She gonna get chonky. Oh, okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. Better help. He shares like everything he eats with her, so he can't have any unbirthday food for the most part. 
Oh. Like, unless he's in his high chair, he can't have avocado. Oh. Avocado is poison to birds. Oh, that's right. That's right. Shuts their organs down. Yeah. Like me, telling my roommate stop eat, stop trying to feed the animals onion. My gosh, I love my dogs. Please do not feed them onion. Yeah, that one's really dangerous for dogs, especially. Yeah. We have a German Shepherd that will just be like, I will take everything. Thank you. Sounds about like stitches. She'll see whatever he gives her. She threw an absolute tantrum because he gave her a dinosaur toy and she didn't want to give it back to me. <laughs> because she thought it was a snack. Oh. It's a snack. Is it not? No. A snackiosaurus. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Because it was a Brachiosaurus. Oh, I thought a Smackiosaurus, like you were gonna smack me with a dinosaur toy. <laughs> no, a snack. Not oh, smack. I, I wouldn't smack that. her with it. No, I meant me. <laughs> there we go. Sweet birds, sweet birds, sweet noises. Can you tell my son has a snack and everybody wants a bite? <laughs> the birds, man, they're pigeons. <laughs> the pigeons have a <laughs> different bird body. My favorite thing in college was to like, um. Sorry, my snake was looking at me, so I was like, you okay? <laughs> um. My favorite thing in college was like to bring bird seed and then just like feed the pigeons, gain their trust, and then take one. <laughs> I wouldn't take it permanently, I'd just have one and show it to my friend and be like, look, I got a pigeon. Like, how did Hold you. Hold gentle like that? cheeseburger. Wait, exactly. I went away for a second, I come back and there's pigeons. What's going on? Oh. So in college, we have a bunch of like pretty much almost tame pigeons where you could just feed them and they'll be like right up at your ankles. My favorite game was to be feeding them and then catch one. I love it. And, I'm going. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, I would literally just um, pick one up and just be like, you're mine now for the day. Where we, well, near where I live, there's like um. The whole river is a protected wildlife bit, and there's like loads of pigeons and stuff. And you can just sit there, and they'll just come and sit on your shoulder. You don't even have to feed them. So cool. Like, my favorite place. Because pigeons. I love pigeons. I want to own pigeons again. I miss Pirate. He was my last pigeon I owned. Cute name for a pigeon. Well, he had one leg. <laughs> he was a retired messenger him. pigeon that got his leg caught and yeah, goodbye oh. leg. I love him. He he was great. His name was we called him like pigeon, peg leg, pegs. He was great. And he, he, he would let you know whenever he was upset about something because he would just slap the heck out of you with his wings. <laughs> I wings love it when strong. birds do that. Yeah, they're weirdly strong. Doesn't make any sense. But I know. They are. Like, I bruise easy, and then they see like a bruise, and they're like, what's that from, like, bird? <laughs> it with the bird. I got hit by a bird, it upset. <laughs> Oh, I'm nearly at the bottom of the sock pile. Oh. This is going okay. Yeah. Jack 
no. Three. Three? Oh my. It's already been three years. He's also very impressed by your drawing. Oh, thank you. He's like, you up to say, wow. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, you yeah, can you believe we've been on the team for three years now? I know. I know. Coming up That's before. Right. Yeah. Cause like you started, we were like in the team, like, and I met you in real life whenever you were like a bowling ball. <laughs> a week before my due date yeah. at MFF. Yeah. Still I... fur tooting, like a crazy person. I know. I was like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm like, okay. With my giant yeah. sign not to squish me. Yeah. That There's must have been just as I was getting involved in the fandom, because I remember your sign. It was cute. My doctor required it to say I could go. Oh. But I ha if I was in a fursuit, I had to wear a giant sign that warned people not to squish me. Not <laughs> the person. I don't want to have no baby at literally at MFF. Oh my god, can you imagine? <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, son, you were born into Furcon. Wait, what? Be proud of your heritage. Don't let me. <laughs> oh. You're one of the worst the places. I was like all sick, but you came to visit me. And I still I appreciate know. that. I know, yeah. This is just like, Shizuka's sick, we need to go get her medicine. I'm immediately just like, yes, what do I need to get? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, like, what she's sick with? She's like, this, this, this. I'm like, all right, this and this. Does she have any allergies you know for? She's like, not that I know. I'm like, ask her that. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> I waddled over with all my medicine, being like, what you need? Yeah. I got you. Yeah. You went full mama bird on everyone. Full mother mode. Even before it was a mom. Yeah. <laughs> it was practice. Gotta get that practice in somehow. These socks match. Uh, what is going on? <laughs> gotta stretch. Okay, I've been sitting in this chair for oh, nine hours now. So I also DM'd for a D&D &D session after before I did this. Oh, my players are interesting. <laughs> <laughs> one of them, so I allowed homebrew in it, and one of them decided that he wanted to be a ghost. My loving boyfriend. <laughs> he is very sweet. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> he wanted to be a ghost. And I love it, because it's almost like every session where we're constantly just like, can you... Is this possible? Like, we had the conversation of, can ghosts taste? Can you feel? Do you, uh, are, do you fear death anymore? <laughs> <laughs> We're just like, huh. Double <laughs> dead. New questions every time. Because you can die in D&D &D as a ghost. <laughs> it's possible. Um. But yeah. I mean, technically, as a ghost, you know, ghosts stop happening because, you know, they, you know, move past the problems that have tied them to the earth, so. Yeah. Currently, their goal. So that is a form of ghost death, too. Yeah. Currently, they're... So he better not be having no character development. <laughs> well, he, his goal currently is he's trying to figure out what happened to his race, because in my little world, uh, all drow are extinct. Like, to everyone's knowledge, so he's trying to figure out what happened. Are you trying a bird? Me? Oh, no, wait, never mind. You had teeth. At first I thought it was a bird, and I was like, yes, birds. Don't tempt me, I will. I have a bird <laughs> soda. I have a griffin. You've seen her. <laughs> yeah. Sona's a great... I have a pigeon soda. <laughs> I 
All the verbs, all of them. Happy looking, but oh no, he's not happy anymore. He looks angry now. I got distracted by looking at how delayed the stream is versus the talking. Oh yeah. It's it's uh it's fun to occasionally just look up at chat and be like, ah yes. <laughs> <laughs> now that's what I call a delay. And now that's what I call a delay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I've st I know somewhat what my time delay is. I've somewhat learned it over this last few days of me tempering with this. Um, and also just past streams. It's also very interesting for me to watch you draw because I don't think I've seen you live draw before. I don't do it that often. I'm not the biggest fan of streaming. I've recently just had a kick for it. Um, but I used to just not be a fan of it at all. I don't know. For some reason back in the day, just having a, pe a ton of people watch me draw was just unsettling. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. Like, I'll stream, like, working on fursuit stuff, but I won't with art because it's like. Instantly, I can't draw anything right and I get mad. Yeah. Like, I can do these headshot expressions super easy. Which is somewhat what we're mainly focusing on on this stream anyway, is mainly just basic anatomy. And, uh, like, full body anatomy and stuff like that. Like, I was probably gonna do a full body next. Just to show. More little details. But recently I've had a kick for it. It's been fun. And I've also been very impressed with myself. Uh, I have a cussing issue, and I haven't cussed once. Nice! Nibis has a, Nibis has a jar. We're, we, have a, we have a swear jar that I'm gonna animate and put in my streams. <laughs> and I don't know no, what we're I'm, not letting I, I don't know... No coins for the... Yeah, this time. I'm trying to be the best of good bean. Because, yeah. <laughs> um, eventually. You gotta set a good example for the youngins. I know, I gotta. <laughs> Gosh. Um, but, uh, it's something I've been actively trying to work on. <laughs> just me as a person. Just like, I should really focus on my actual words instead of just using filler. Adult talk. I got good at, uh, like, not saying curse words when I worked at Cracker Barrel. And, like, I would say, like, different things instead. And sometimes I'll still say, like, son of a biscuit eater. Because I had to, like, catch myself before I said the bad word because I didn't want to get in trouble. So, yeah, sometimes I still say, like, dumb things that I came up with because it fit with Cracker Barrel and I thought it was funny. That's okay. And I needed a sudden save. That's okay, I do Son of a Biscuit sometime. Or Heckin' Pineapple. Heckin' Pineapple. That one is just from my buddy N Mindy, she would say that. <laughs> just awful and say whatever comes to my foot. But my head first, I can't even get my words out today. Blech. How do language? Uh, 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 uh. No, we're not letting Yoshi out either. It's not time for a bird party. <laughs> that sounds bird like party. chaos. Bird party! 
It's like the pug party, uh, but less of the pug screaming for death. <laughs> sounds like an amazing party, but absolute chaos. <laughs> Sometimes I literally let all of my oh, like I open up all my bird cages, let them hang out. I'll like get like a big roasting tray and like fill, put some water in it so they can take like baths and have a pool party. And I'll put like a bunch of peppers and all kinds of like other yummy things in like a charcuterie board. And it's a giant parrot party. And they it is the funnest thing there. ever. They all just like vibe. Until I realize I have to get everybody back in the cages at some <laughs> point. <laughs> I had a cup of tea. What did I do with it? I drank it. No, I think I left it. It's pretty cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Warm it up in the microwave. Ew, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, you put milk in your tea. Eat. It's no water. A way you can heat up your tea is you can, like, boil a bowl of water. And then put the cup into the boil, oh, the bowl of boiling water, and it will heat it up in a gentle manner. It's okay. I'm just gonna chug it. <laughs> what are you doing? Thank you. What are you doing? Thank you. Oh, I love it. Oh, if you could just see the smile on my face, I'm so happy. Oh. Thank oh. you. I can't give you a kiss, I'm over here. <laughs> okay, thank you. click out, so prepare for all the bird talking. Oh, I love it. No, we don't need to use a baby wipe on Jack. Or on click. Click is one of the few, like, extremely friendly ringnecks, so if anybody ever comes here, like, he will absolutely be everyone's friend. Oh. I love that. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Pretty pretty girl. Pretty pretty girl. Uh, I think I'm finally at He's the He's actually talking to my phone. <laughs> uh. Oh, pretty pretty When he really wants to eat something that I'm eating, they'll say happy birthday, Cluck. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna go mute because my son is angry. Got it. He scream. Angie, angie child. Decided oh. to do it back for you. Something different. You got that fluffy booty. Yeah. Corgi bum. Most of my bums are corgi bum. <laughs> 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 That's just how I draw them. I don't think I ever draw anything from the back because, no, I just can't. <laughs> I understand that. That's just how I am. I... Yeah, pretty much draw side on headshots because that's all I can draw. <laughs> I get that. It takes it takes practice. I believe in you. I'm just lazy. You know, that is also a move. 
<laughs> like, I'm sure if I put my heart into it, I could do some really realistic stuff if I really want to try and put the hours. But man, exactly, but so you could watch to... Netflix instead. Oh, no. I'd rather game. <laughs> I, I don't like movies. I don't like movies I just watch watching hours TV. of Disney. Oh, it's the only thing I do. I do like I just Disney. just watch Walking Dead on repeat. Oh, I do like Disney. Love me a bit of Disney movies. I still haven't oh my seen God. Encanto. How? It's everywhere. <laughs> I'm so busy. I'm so It's busy. very good when you do watch it. And plus, yeah. my boyfriend really wants to watch it with me. <laughs> it's his fault. It is his fault. Hey. <laughs> I'm going to text him after this and be like, why haven't we watched that? Got to the bottom of Sock Mountain, and I've got seven socks, and none of them match. <laughs> uh oh. How has this happened? I don't know. Do you know All what? right, I'm everyone in chat, we thing. got one more hour before this stream is set to a close. Is there anything specific you would like to see us draw? or see us talk about, or anything you want review on. It was loud. Huh? Someone messaged on, in the Facebook group. Oh, yeah, that might be picking up. I have very... Yeah, sensitive. they put the legs and torso. I don't know if that's aimed at what you're drawing or Got it. if they're just sending the legs and torso. Drawing from the side and then... Sorry, I'm trying to look. Legs and the torso. Got it. So one person's wanting. Okay. So we will Damn. actually do both sides. Okay, so... How I do my legs, right here, is I start with like a little curve right here, then I'll bring it down, and then bring it back, and curve it back to right here. That is just my beginning. We're gonna mark out where our knee is with our circle, and then we're gonna do a curving line that way, and for us we're doing a side view, so we're just going to do a straight line down. And then more style on the wings. Got it. We can do wings as well. Shizuka is an amazing one on wings. We'll just clip back to her for wings. Uh, whenever we get there, well, we'll continue with the legs for the moment. And then... And me. Make two lines going down here, and then we add our little oval, little triangle right here for our paws. And we add for the toes, just little circles like that. Make sure we have everything set and it looks proper. And there we go. That's just a side view on how to do legs. Um. Torso, um, I kind of just do a kind of shape like this, and then have a bit of an arch to it, and then this is where I would bring in my leg. In. Knee's gonna go there. Ankle, and then the foot would be going down that way, but I ran out of room. And then make sure to adjust, make things look proper. And then we can even like put the back leg right here.
somewhat like that. I go just move these around. <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and pop over to you, Shizuka, if you want right. to talk about wings again, and maybe just some other anatomy. That is my messages. There we go. <laughs> that on my cat. No. <laughs> sure. Is there anything specific they want to know about things? Uh, just basically maybe anything more. Uh, you might have already done it, though. I don't want to make yourself repeat yourself. <laughs> it's alright. Let's see. So oftentimes the line art will be simplified when it comes to the details of especially the little feathers. But I think a lot of artists like to start showing feather details when it comes to the area around the shoulders because the way that shape is, uh, there's like a curvature that the feathers go around that are like they are coming out around so they would tend to rise up and get a little bit more ruffled up around this area. That's why you'll sometimes see texture drawn where the shoulder base is. And then when it comes to this outer edge of the wing arm, often that probably looks less like a straight line and it'll have little edges of feathers. You can draw an edge of very small feathers kind of like being the rim. Maybe there's like a slight second layer that can kind of be visible, but most of the time once they get into the inner part of the wing, all those little feathers will basically blend together. You can barely see the edges because they're so small and delicate. Especially if they're the same color. Something that's really cool that you can do in your uh, winged character design is if each feather has like a little bit of like, say for example, a color ring around the edge. If you have something like that, that gives you the chance to draw a tiny ring for every single feather and that tends to look cool. But also, it's a whole lot of work, so if you don't want to draw a tiny little ring for every single feather, then you could maybe do it for just the outer feather, or just the noticeable feathers. Or not do it. It's all up to you. I guess another thing is, when you're designing characters that have feather accents, oftentimes when it comes to feathers that blend into the body, there will be another another or more layers of feathers, such as, for example, on these tail feather examples. It will probably less likely be just like one layer of feather on the tail, but there will be more feathers that cover up this base so that way you don't see the actual edge of the tail meeting the feathers. Because there's this base area of the feather that you often see that has like these little wispy ends that part tends to be covered up by other feathers, or you can use fur to cover that up. I think like I said before, the from the top view of the tail feathers, the endmost tail feathers will overlap the innermost tail feathers, or the frontmost tail feathers. And from the bottom side, the frontmost tail feathers will overlap the backmost tail feathers. This kind of rule tends to be very uh, standard, very consistent, especially with like when you get to the butt feathers. They will also have like the outermost feathers overlap the frontmost feathers. But you can switch that around when it comes to the feathers that are found on the wing arm. They just overlap very much like fish scales because they're there not for flight, but just for covering up the wing arm. I had drawn a couple more sketches over here where I was beginning to show how the duchy's neck will bend forward when they lower their head. You can reference how horses uh, lean their necks down when they graze. Sometimes that folds in on itself, but it's a very tight squeeze as they bend their head down. And with these sketches, I'm showing how the duchy's neck is actually vertically quite narrow like for example if this is the cross section it's like this rather than a circle and it of course won't be like that and so it has a bit more flexibility turning left to right and a little bit less flexibility turning up and down in fact it probably can't curve much except for a little bit of an arch like that 
it cannot arch that way. They can straighten out their neck and then like tilt their chin up, but otherwise they don't really arch their neck the other way very much because they don't have the flexibility for it or the shape. You want to add even more definition? You can have this kind of a shape. This is the shape of the muscles on the neck. There's this little upper part, this dorsal part that is a little bit narrower. You all, you'll often see that on horses. Then there's the main muscle. Goes like this, has kind of like a that work shape. Shorter on the top side, longer on the bottom side. And then you have the lower part. Which is the bottom of the neck. It's soft it can, and it can squish into on itself a little bit, which is what you can see here. Then for these bottom sketches, just shows a little bit of an example of how the duchy's neck can turn and how the neck muscle comes up to meet it. They tend to have this uh, kind of a diagonal line that uh, shows where their shape of their neck goes. There's this like inner crevice part and this part reaches it, it meets the corner of their cheekbones. On the top side of their neck, they have that divot that's right here. Shows like this, and you can see it on horses. And of course, that bottom neck crevice meets to here. So this is a neck of a duchy that's turning its head away. Here are its ears. Here's the dome of its ears, and then the rims of its outer ears. And it's got its cheek and its under jaw and, and the rest of its face, which is kind of hard to show at this angle. It's really cool though. Thanks. Also interesting how you just draw your ears, how you do like separate little circles and how you just extend. <laughs> Yeah, so the dome part is the part that will be really 3D because the inner part is going around to here and it's like that. And this part up here of the ear tends to be really flat. Yeah. So if the ear is like facing a little bit further back, it will probably look like you got the dome, you got the base whole ear of the ear. Mm -hmm. And then if it's facing further back, the ears might just be a line. And yeah. That's really, really cool. Thanks. As for how the wings sit on the body, there is kind of like, as far as I know, no real life precedent for how wings sit on the body. Because the way it works for birds is that they have an extremely fluffy chest that actually overlaps their wings a little bit and fills them out so they become borb, a round burb. Mm -hmm. But duchies have short fur and very defined muscles. So their wings will probably sit on top and they probably can fill in this little gap that the teardrop shape of their chest makes. True. Like that. Now, out of curiosity, because I know some duchies have it, including our whisper, butt yeah. wings. <laughs> butt wings? Yeah. Would that be any, like, would you draw that any different, or...? Uh, I could show how I drew it on uh, the whisper commission. Sure! Yeah. Let's see. Good way to, like, show off the chat that you're beautifully finished art as <laughs> well. So here it is. I think I took some artistic liberties here. I had the top dorsal muscle of, uh, I'll just make a new layer and do red lines. Dorsal muscle of the wing, which is like your, the top part of your arm muscle comes from in front of the hips. Mm -hmm. And it comes from like this area right here where there's like a little gap in your waist. Then I have the back muscle actually merges into the tail. Interesting. And that's their other muscle Fancy muscle name that I don't know, but it's there. Mm -hmm. 
and the breath Let's would just basically be the same. Yeah. Cool. And how well does the duchy fly that way? I guess magic. Uh, but first. The helicopter spins them <laughs> round. <laughs> they fly the way bumblebees do, as they say. Oh. And with etherical power, too. Yeah. Do you want to go over, like, um, legs and torso? As sure. Well? So, like, the legs are based off the horse's legs, except for the final joint, which is can become a paw, which basically gives them an extra joint. On the website, they call it digital gate, old grade. That's what it's called, which is a mix between digitigrade and old, old, dig, I don't know how to pronounce it, old grade, which is what horses are. Digitigrade is what uh, like canines are, felines, mm -hmm. and the front side is unlike horses in that it's only horse up near the chest area and the chest shape, but it's it's more like a maned wolf where it's got a pretty long instep of the uh, wrists, but it's it's still more arm than wrist. It's not halfway like a horse. As for the torso, based off a horse, but a little bit, I, I tend to draw it a little bit elongated so they can have the extra room for the wing muscle. Yeah. Just be a little bit longer and slightly more flexible. Horses tend to be very round. They're like walking barrels. <laughs> yeah. But they, I tend to slope, uh, make them a little bit leaner and more like streamlined. Mm-hmm. They have this part, the part near the back is a curve like that, the part near the front is a curve like that to make it very simple, but you just kind of like, go like that. The curve near the front is where their rib cage comes out, like that, so if I draw it like this, that's their rib cage, kind of comes around like that, sort of shape. They're very filled out. They don't have like extra space in them like cats do. What you see is what is when it comes to that. You've got like lean like uh, loin muscle, whatever you call that. Then you got the hindquarter muscles, which have to be very strong to carry their big tail and use their tail for steering. And then they got their sloped back. It's like got an, it's a slightly concave. That's probably the right word. Back so. not too sloped, unless if you want to make them like similar to horses. If you want to make them look skinny and like starving, you can do it even more sloped back. Like Ooh, make it just a little yeah. bit more of a curve. Make that hip bone jut out just a little bit more for like a starving duchy. That'd be good for like an abyssal. Yeah. When, when they're not fully filled out, their muscles are like deteriorated and everything starts to just like slope and like get a little bit like thinner on their bone frame. Mm -hmm. So how would and you like, shoulder um, for your legs and stuff like that, how would you thin it out to like make them look a bit more emaciated? Emaciated? Yeah. Uh, Think, well, their hind leg here can't get much more emaciated, but around here you can make it just a little bit thinner. You can, right before the knee, you can make it a little straight, make it like do a little divot right there because there's nothing to fill it out anymore. It just gets thinner. Mm -hmm. Little parts where it doesn't quite, where it kind of like fits more to, uh, fits more to frame around the skeleton. Yeah. Just get a little thinner around the hind quarters. And stuff like that. That's cool. Yeah, another thing is this area right here is all soft. Yeah. It's uh there's not much here, it's like all soft and squishy. So if a very emaciated Dutch you would have that part be really thin. Maybe even have you can something cool you can do is you can have the rib cage jut out like that. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Especially since duchies don't really have all the guts that, um, True. like, of course, horses do. That part is very squishy, so it can go really far in. 
and just push in all the way. You could find the spine. Yep. I wouldn't recommend it, but. <laughs> but. <laughs> and I think it's really cool. Yep. And this part could probably like get really thin too. Yeah, stick legs. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like on the face because you do your face is pretty thin already yeah the faces well I, can, I still have a little bit of a better view over here mm -hmm. the, they can, the eyes can sink in and look really like deathly you can make the cheekbones like even more noticeable by going like yeah. that because this area is the muscle for the jaw so they can open and close their mouth so if they don't have that then they have nothing <laughs> Fun ideas for everybody. Yeah. The ear is cartilage, so on like a really like messed up duchy, you can just like shred that up, make it look all war torn. Yeah. I mean, for domestic duchies, they have their ears cropped. Yeah. So how would you draw your cropped ears? I know how I would draw mine. Yep. Essentially, you just take the ear and you do a cut. You can actually show a little bit of how, like, there's some, like, the bare flesh show it sticking out. Mm -hmm. But I guess the further down you cut, the more you'll see that, like, for example, remember again, the dome of the ear and then the flap of the ear. If you cut down too very far, you'll just see this, like, cut that goes all the way around like this. Yeah. It's the ear, and that's what used to be of the ear. The ear hole. <laughs> Your ear canal. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I drew over here how when they open their mouth really wide, their um, jowls are uh, flexible and loose. But when they open their mouth, they, it's not like an instant, ah, they will actually like fill in most of the sides of their mouth. Mm -hmm. It's not like a fog. <laughs> yeah, it's like a closed mouth is like that, and an open mouth is like that, like yeah. kind of fills in. Stretch out your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I guess what a lot of people draw that's kind of like unspoken is how they got the kitty lip shape. <laughs> but it's a little bit more subtle, usually. True. On the side, you just see that curve of the muzzle, but from the front, you can see that subtle lip. When you look at them from like above, it looks almost flat. I'll definitely be able to like maybe upload this in high resolution. Yeah. I like it. Thanks. Alrighty. Uh see how I draw my crop ears because I mainly just go off what Nose reference was. Is It's just that short ear that she had that one time. Ah. Uh. Does that mean that's correct? Probably not. But never really know. Yeah. And there's no wrong way to stylize art. True. It'd be fun to see different styles for domestic duchess too, whenever they eventually just fully come out. Yeah. When all the information for them are out. Oh, 
I'm probably passing out once I'm done. I'll find out for over 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's my fault. I could've taken a nap. Well, it's half half nine here, so I'm probably gonna die once we're done as well. I get that, I get that. Slipper time. Yeah. Probably gonna do one more full body. My cat keeps grabbing the microphone. Please stop. <laughs> Do it, Kitty. Take it. No, he is naughty. Hold on to him. Oh, my kitty's so naughty. Well, except for Lynx. Lynx is the queen. What she demands, she gets. What my Rafi does, except what he wants, is the microphone. Mm. No, we're not having it. No. There we go, he's coming again. What do you want? What do you want? Thanks. Oh. <sighs> oh, chat, you all had fun. Just coming down to our last 30 minutes. Thank you. Got another cat. Oh no, he's broken the Ruffy, leave it. Go on. <laughs> Fico, go away. He just decided he was going to go and poke the beetles, so he has been removed from the room. No beetles for him.
definitely been fun to just like chill. Just do it. Yeah. me realize how much I need to practice full bodies. I just avoid them. You'll never get better if you continue to avoid them. Got to practice. That's you don't very have to true. Show it. <laughs> you never have to show it. You can always just practice. You know, <laughs> just the never of... show anything again. <laughs> you know the amount of trash doodles I have in my computer that are just sitting there now forever gone and lost to time. <laughs> oh, I, I made like a throwaway Telegram channel, and it's just full of like doodles that I did that are kind of good, but are like meme worthy level doodles. <laughs> Oh, dude, same. I have one of those still. <laughs> it's just like, I feel like people need to see these, but they're awful, but I love them. <laughs> like, there's a hedgehog with shades carrying a um, picnic blanket. <laughs> it's zero, what is it? What do you have problems with? Now my Siamese kitty is acting up. <laughs> Jasper, go lay down. This is an anatomy. Three. This is meme that needs to be said. It's very ah. <laughs> <laughs> It this has is, strong ah this, energy. This is my. <laughs> this is what needs to be drawn. Sometimes this, this is a new meme. <laughs> sometimes you do anatomy. Sometimes you do. I need this. <laughs> this is what's in my brain. <laughs> it's perfect. It's like when you um you release that knife meme. I was like, I need this. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it goes. I love it. It looks like an anteater though. It kind of does. <laughs> it's the snoot. I would, I would still boot that snoot. Scream so loud. Does he scream? There. Perfect. Ah. Beautiful, I love him. Yes, the mods <laughs> of this stream will be available. And I will also be uploading the VODs to uh, YouTube because uh, Twitch only has like a 14 day availability before they delete them and then I get sad. I may just make <clears throat> a separate YouTube. I don't know if we still have an Angel Dragons YouTube. I think we do. I could get in touch with Whisper about that. This is Ah. Uh, his next meme. Does he scream? What is he afraid of? Same thing as this guy. <laughs> <laughs> the same pickle. <laughs> uh, 
up. Also, we cannot do a duchy stream without this. This needs to come- I need to make a new one of these. This needs to come back to the forefront. God, the angle there again. <laughs> Who was it who originally gone. created them? I don't remember. That's a kind of, question. They just kind of appeared one day in the Telegram chat, and I was like, where did these angles come from? <laughs> <laughs> you do not question the angles. <laughs> They're beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Might have been click. I think even um, Ren Ren had one. Everyone, this is proper anatomy for an angle dragon. Look <laughs> at <laughs> little legs. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it looks like a paper airplane. You just like, throw it. <laughs> Don't tempt me. I will draw a paper airplane. <laughs> <laughs> it would go a heckin' fast. It's always the last 30 it. minutes is chaos. Always. So, there we go. Uh, angle dragon? Angle dragon. There you go. <laughs> I'm sorry that the last 30 minutes is this chaos. I should have slept before the stream. <laughs> I should have called in the day before. <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> Lesson learned. Worth it though. Worth I mean, it. would we have got an angled angle without that? Or an ah. <laughs> ah. Um, what was the next one that we wanted? <laughs> Dunno, I got distracted by I ah. Got... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you about the angle dragon. That makes me so happy. That's what I try. I strive to achieve for. That's the next free base I'm coming out with. By the way, you guys, we need new angle dragons. I'm gonna have, have fun and make it really nice. This is a bad, bad drawing. You're getting high res angle dragons from me. Look at that muscle ring. Look at it. <laughs> also, legs. I, I may also come out. <laughs> Um, uh, may also come out as a uh, meme. Also, this guy. This guy is also a favorite. Yes. <laughs> the angles will come back with a vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what I need. It's just the revenge of angle. <laughs> Shizuka, just for curiosities, uh, what's yeah. your anatomy for angle dragons? Angle dragons? Angle dragons. <laughs> we need oh, this. It's gotta be the right <laughs> angle. <laughs> oh, but as a Dutch angel dragon, you gotta have a, add like a, an angle even then. Oh, yeah. Like, we need that realistic angle dragon. That little square <laughs> at the corner. Uh-huh. The little thing co showing the angles, what that 30 degrees or something? Oh, you're right. I put a circle. I should have put a square. <laughs> oh, I'm learning. <laughs> that was your maths exam. Oh, man. I what sure did. You're right, right I sure did. <laughs> Neggies. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> yes. And the wings are just like, kind of like that, and then yes. tail. Yeah. Oh, it's so cute. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so cute. <laughs> oh, this is what we needed, everybody. <laughs> this is important. Oh, oh, what is their size? That's the most important. Um. Is this the angled angles, or...? <laughs> yeah, the angled dragons. What is their size? 
I guess we're, we're, we, we officially can say that. Um, uh, cat. They're the size of cats. <laughs> yeah. You could pick them up and snuggle them. I want plushes of this. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I want someone in their, of their, uh, what if they're like little mice? Oh, that's also cute. Okay, yeah, cats, I feel like they cats is as big. Cats is as They're big vectors, as they can go. They're vectors, and they can be scaled up and down. Yeah. <laughs> so, so cats is as big as they can get, but as small as they can get is like um, uh, a pinky, a pinky mouse. Yeah. Super small. Um, but yes, I want like plushes of angle dragons for fur suitors to just carry around. <laughs> <laughs> I want this meme I would to buy be, that. I want this meme to be carried. They just manifest unexplainably. <laughs> it just manifests. I, I hope so. That's, I want to see that in the group. I will throw all my money at that. <laughs> <laughs> Dubs needs this. Maybe the lore is that some duchy got too into geometry. It just oh, yeah. started appearing. Oh yeah, that is definitely <laughs> Oh yeah, they're definitely like math buddies. They will help you with your math. Um, though, though, some have issues of eating your homework. <laughs> Those are the acute angle dragons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they straight up will just eat your homework. But the 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 uh obtuse. Yeah, the obtuse angle dragons. They'll help you. They'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> the only word I remember from maths. Thank, <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Thank you. I was struggling there. I'm like, I know there's another one. It's acute and something else. <laughs> Big and small. Ah. Uh, I, have, I have plans now. <laughs> I have plans. Uh, guess what's coming up around the corner? I have plans. <laughs> Sounds oh. dangerous. Oh, it is. It is. It's a little bit. But it'll be fun. Um, but yes, those are... Those are our beautiful, beautiful angle dragons. I know, right? <laughs> I thought of this, and now I'm like, I want this. I will throw <laughs> money at someone. I need to go look up some plush makers. Be like, hey. Please. Or just pull out my old sewing machine. So are they like a flat block or a slab, or maybe are they like a cone? I was thinking a slab. Slice of cheese. <laughs> a slice of cheese. You could just, just like casually just like oh, smack no. it on like the muzzle of a fursuiter. <laughs> just whack. I need that. <laughs> it's got it needs magnets. To make, it's got to make that wet slapping noise as well. Oh no. But yes. I'll cheese every fursuit I come across. I want to draw like a sub from Subway, but instead of American cheese triangles, it's just a bunch of ankle dangles. <laughs> also, uh, this is the antho version of them. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> He's fine. Why he be looking like that? He, 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 he's okay. <laughs> don't worry about him. It's like he's fallen over. Someone help him up. No. It's America. He has to get life lit. Best just walks around staring straight at the sky. <laughs> oh gosh. Whispers, thank goodness Whispers not here. <laughs> Uh, probably she, chaos. <laughs> she left us without an adult. This is what happens. I am the adult. <laughs> <laughs> we got two wranglers and an archangel here. It's fine. I am the adult. <laughs> I think we need an adult adult. Oh, no. I'm nothing but the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> uh. <laughs> do we what other lore do you want to know about angle dragons like don't worry I'll flesh it out and I, there might be you know what you all get a sneak peek there might be a post 
on April Fool's Day. Oh, what do they sound like? A static, like, static from uh, a TV? A uh, cubes! Their eggs are cubes. Ugly noise. <laughs> <laughs> Which is concerning, because they're very flat. How would you lay a cube egg? I... I created it without asking. How does one fly? Um... Paper airplane? <laughs> paper airplane. <laughs> yeet it. You just yeet it. Like, they go <laughs> off in, like, like, counters and tables, and they try and fly, and they just gently glide down like paper. Yeah, they got their little Squirrel. AV wings. They, they flap them as much as they can, but... <laughs> Oh, does it, does it, uh, does it take off? <laughs> Angle <Yes>. pyramid. <laughs> um, I wouldn't recommend it because it might make a, uh, a, a black hole. Especially Do if it. you, ex though if you get an acute and a obtuse angle dragons and put them together, uh, yeah, you're gonna make a wormhole. <laughs> I need limited risk. power. Let's do it. <laughs> Solve the power crisis. Solve the power crisis. <laughs> with these, with these angle <laughs> dragons combined. Hungry. An isosceles angle dragon. Dra dra oh God, I can't say the word dragon. <laughs> dragon. Is that like a, a song Philly pair? Yes. Keep the black hole. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> as, they, as they make a wormhole. <laughs> oh, it's so romantic. It ends, the <laughs> ends the world. <laughs> That's how they make a cube. <laughs> By the way, that's how they make their <laughs> eggs. <laughs> they have to destroy an entire world. <laughs> Dragon. No one can stop me. You're absolutely correct, and you know what? I encourage it. <laughs> <laughs> Only you can make Sosalis and Gold Dragons. That's right. Color it blue. Blue? Got it. Blue. The one thing colored. <laughs> Cubes just have to Where's be blue. Where's my Crayola? Get There's the my Crayola. crayon. Egg. <laughs> there we go. No, no, no. The it's egg not... uh, is mortal. You can't ever hurt these eggs. Like, you can yeet it and they, like, rubber band around everywhere. Oh my god, it's a flubber egg. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Except it's straight up, like, solid. <laughs> it, it will bounce, but it will not, mo it will not move. <laughs> you may, 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 though, depending on how many bounces you do to this egg is, uh how you will get either an isosceles angle dragon or an acute angle dragon.
how which one is. Um, one is a slightly different hue of blue. It's like one little bit of off. It's very hard to tell. Only angle dragon experts know. We are not experts. No one can ever be an expert on these chaotic creatures. Chaos. Let chaos reign. <laughs> But with that, our time is almost at a close. And on that bombshell. And on that bombshell, I know, with the angle dragon lore that you guys all got super, <laughs> super sneak peek of. Oh no, there's an obtuse angle dragon like right here. Wait, are they? I don't know. What's it? Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I haven't done math. What's the difference? <laughs> a cute, a cute is angle dragon. Oh, oh yeah, Shizuka's I'm teaching at Look at that. A cute would be smaller than 90 degrees. A cute is bigger than 90 oh, degrees. Oh, thank you, Shizuka, for te Oh, I love it. Oh, I love mm. it. Oh, please send that to me afterwards. <laughs> it looks like a pancake. Someone's run it over. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it! Oh, it's so cute! Oh, I love it so oh. much. Oh yeah, no, that is. Uh, so this is coming out into the angle drag. All the angle dragon lore that you heard today is coming out April Fools, <laughs> twenty twenty two. You all well, hear I guess folks. this is what happens when you combine them. Yeah, you gotta, we gotta put them right there. And then that makes a wormhole. <laughs> you could put loads of them together and make a circle. <laughs> oh, these angle dragons make a circle. <laughs> they'll, they'll fuse together and oh, we create the ultimate. Chart. Oh my god, a dirk pie. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with us? <laughs> oh, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> One of these things just doesn't belong here. <laughs> it kind of looks like pizza, I'm not it gonna does lie. It like pizza. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, I love it. This is amazing. They're cuddling. They're snuggling. This isn't. Oh. This isn't awful at all. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's going to be more dangerous than the two Shh. acute ones together. They may be creating a world <laughs> of their own. Ah, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. a chunky one. Oh, I love it. He, he, he ate all of the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Slightly bigger. Slightly bigger. <laughs> oh. oh, I love it. <laughs> I lie, the obtuse one kind of looks like a tea bag. Yes. But also, I don't know if that's the British in me. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I, I, I agree. But I still love it. It's a pancake. This makes me happy. It it's adds so something new to something, uh, to uh, to an old meme. I didn't like, know I needed this until now. I same. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, well, if you just <laughs> you're just gonna put it in. The... <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> Have its tiny little stick. Like yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The ultimate British. Oh no, oh angle. yes, this is exactly what we need. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm so happy. Please send that to me, Shizuka. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. Oh, I'm gonna 
<laughs> That's gonna be my wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up gonna go in the fridge. <laughs> I'll print that and put it on my fridge. Don't tempt me. <laughs> uh, and with that, and the secret hidden lore at the end of the stream that no one expected, including myself. <laughs> Um, I think this is where we're gonna end today. Next, uh, this Friday, actually, we're gonna go more into, like, details and detailing your artwork. So, how to, like, make your characters unique, so different, like, fun things you can add to them, um, different art styles as well. We covered a bit on Toony and Realistic today, um, but we can definitely go on to further ones, like, uh, Whispers like kimono style. We can do a little bit of that if she wants to stream. I deliberately did that one late night for her to have that possibility. Um, and then, um, just more fun things, even just how to do line art and how we do our line arts and stuff like that. But yeah, I hope everyone had a fun time. I know we did. Yeah. Anything else you guys like to say to everybody? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, this was fun. I definitely look forward to doing this again. Thank you all. Yeah, I appreciate yes. this. <laughs> Thanks for Friday. having me. Yeah. I can't wait to do more of this Friday. This was a lot of fun. And yeah. And with that, everyone... See you Friday. Have fun.